Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to a sunny and warm Canberra. It's the Deakin Stadium as the venue for the MPL2 Grand Final between Ugali Soccer Club and Wagga City Wanderers. I'm Russ Gibbs, your commentator for this afternoon. Joining me on the scaffold before we go through the teams is area news sports journalist Liam Warren. Welcome, Liam. Thanks for driving all the way down. Yeah, thanks for having me, Russ. It's going to be a great day for having a Riverina derby in the Grand Final. Just yeah. make it that bit more special. Yeah, isn't it great? And the sun's out and everything's fantastic here at the moment. The pitch is playing really well. We'll bring you some news of the under-23s in a moment. First of all, though, because kickoff is looming. Let's go through the side, starting with Ugali Soccer Club. Luke Santolin's picked a 4-3-3 to start with this afternoon. Michael Tapauli in goal. Jordan Bavaresco comes in for Andrew Vitucci, who's unavailable because of a christening at right back. Luke Pandolfo and Grant Davidson, the central defenders. 17-year-old Colby Sears at left back. Midfield three of Isaac Donadell and Jacob Donadell flanking Joe Priest. The front three full of goals, Calvin Roddy, Danny Roche and Mitch Bajanti. Yeah, Colby Sears is going to be one to watch out for. He's really taken the opportunity that he was gifted at the start of the season with an injury. He wasn't in the starting 11, but since that injury, he's come in and cemented this spot, and it's been really good to watch him play. On the bench, Mason Donadil, Dominic Galuzzo, Samuel Rossiti, Luke Armanini, the goalkeeper, and Luke Santolin himself. Wagga City Wanderers have gone for a 4 2 1 3 formation. Michael Babich picking the side as follows and making one change from the team that won in the semi finals. Luke Stevens suspended for being sent off. So the changes are Robert Fry comes in goal, the back four William Shuttleworth, Dylan Burkray, Sean Moffitt, and Logan Flanagan, who makes his first start of the season at left back. Um, Anno Matawi. Isaac Brooker and Matt Mensa, the midfield three with Mensa at the point. The front three of Ben Smith and Elijah Brooker and Tyler Allen is released as a left-sided forward from left-back last week. Yeah, well, Matt Mensa's no stranger to playing at Deakin Stadium with his time in playing in the MPL one sides around here, so it's not an unusual spot for him to be in. Zach Pinney, Daniel Ocheng, Jacob Brooker, Liam Dadini, the goalkeeper, and Carl Pedeski, who we hope to see today. He, this will be his final match for Wagga City Wanderers. Retiring after today, 37 years of age, and hopefully we'll get to see him strut his stuff around this field once more like he used to do in the past. It's not too bad to still be running around the 37 at sort of a high level. Good Absol effort. Absolutely. Nathan Shakespeare, experienced referee in the middle. Less experience on the line. Theo Trocopoulos and Damon Van Putten, their first senior MPL Grand Finals for the uh, assistants today. Alex McConaughey, the fourth official. Great for the young referees to get uh, an opportunity in this look on this occasion. It is. It's great to see young refs getting around and sort of taking that opportunity that they get given on the Grand Final day. Certainly looking forward to this one. Ugali in the yellow, Wagga City Wanderers in the black and white stripes. They met once already this season at Solomad Stadium. Ugali came out on top three goals to one. Roche, Roddy and Bajanti with the goals. Isaac Brooker with a penalty for the Wanderers in response. Putting you on the spot, Liam, Ugali have been the team to beat all season. Are they the team to beat again today? Well, it's hard to go past them, really. Their form this season, they've only lost one game and that was missing Joe Priest. And Joey's out there this, today, so he'll be one to watch with his energy in the midfield. And it's, look, it's hard to go past them. They dominated Wagga City last time they played, and it's, it'd be odd to see them do anything different today, I reckon. If you're looking for an omen, though, the under 23s result this morning Wagga City Wanderers 1, ANU FC 1, Wagga prevailing 5 4 in the penalty shootout. So they've got one trophy under their belts today, the Wanderers. They're looking for a second. It would be an upset, but you never know. The Riverina Derby, MPL 2, Grand Final Day. Let's see who comes out on top. The Wanderers attacking the goal to our right in the first half. Matt Mentor with the first ball forward looking for Allen. He's got him in already. Support ahead of Tyler Allen. Runs into Donadell. Battle here for Brooker. Trying to get away in the early stages. Falls for Isaac Brooker. Allen backwards to Logan Flanagan as I said the 17 year old his first start of the season the first decent ball as well a good one over the top looking for Ben Smith trying to turn and twist his way into the penalty area fizzing it across and Ugali on the back foot to start off with bright start from Wagga yeah the good start and physical battle which is kind of what you'd expect in the midfield from with Donatelles there and also with Jordan Bavaresco battling out wide Michael Babich will be hoping his side can make a swift start. They'll need to. This Ugali side's been full of goals all season. 33 of them. They've scored and only conceded 11. And two top scorers in the competition as well with Roche and Bajanti. So they'll be the two to look out for. Mensa Wagga's top scorer. Not far behind with seven. Danny Roche with 11 this year. Mitch Bajanti with nine.
nice to see a few people in as well. A few supporters from both clubs have been able to make the journey. Limited to 100 per team. Still good to good to see them make the make the trip. Four hours from Griffith and 20 bit from Wagga. So good dedication from the supporters. Is Mentor swinging the first shot of the match? Way off target there. Has got previous here, Matt Mensah, scored a goal in a Federation Cup final at that end for Togonong United to send them into the FFA Cup in the inaugural season. So we bet against him from that range. No, and he did score the crucial penalty last weekend to get them to this stage, so they'll be looking for him to try and find the back of the net again this weekend. For those of you who are tuning in, might not know too much about these sides, Ugali were established in 1954, they've been around the traps. Played in the Griffith, Wagga and Shepparton competitions, but they also played in the Canberra Leagues back in the 80s, so they're no stranger to this area. There's the first ball over the top. Roshi might be in here. An opportunity. He's got a second chance, and it was a decent stop by Robert Fry. First real chance to see Ugali as an attacking threat. That, that's how Ugali is going to get him with the long ball, trying to get Roshi in behind, because he's got plenty of speed to get him behind that Wagga defence, so they'll have to be alert to that danger. Fry was quick off his line to try and snuff it out. Corner will be taken by Roddy. Only four yellow shirts in the box at the moment. Two on the top of the area, including Joe Priest. That swung in towards the far post. Nodded clear. Quicked into the air by Pandolfo. And Bavaresco can't find Calvin Roddy. A little bit of nerves, perhaps, Liam, in the early stages, do you expect? It comes to sort of be expected a game like this the first time in the NPL 2 final, so... Take a bit of time to settle in. As you'd expect from two places from the country. There's a lot of brothers and relations in this side. Yeah, there's a couple of Griffith boys playing for the Wagga team as well, which just to add a bit more spice to the clash. Both have been a breath of fresh air to this MPL2 competition this year. Jacob Donadell switching the direction of the attack. Looking for Roddy. Swings it into the area. Calvin Roddy was a professional in Scotland and Norway. He's been a handy addition for the Ugali side along with Roche as the two visa players. Certainly helps if you've got 15 goals between those two. Add another 19 from, nine in from Mitch Bajanti and you can see why they're top of the, top of the table and favourites heading into this one. Pandolfo. I think we'll see Ugali trying to dominate as much possession as they can. I think you can kind of see Wagga's game plan already. They're trying to keep as many back as possible and keep, keep Ugali the long balls. Donadel back to Pandolfo. Sears. Bajanti around the corner. There's a slip here and Roche might be in. Opportunity for Roche again. Doesn't get much on the shots. But once more, a snapshot of just how dangerous Ugali are in the front third. Yeah, unfortunate slip from the Wagga defence almost let them in. And Marshall will be a bit angry with himself that he didn't finish that chance a bit better. Brooker will chase. He's got the legs on Pandolfo here. Very much isolated, though, and he's done well to win his team a corner. First set piece of the afternoon. The very young Wagga City side. Plenty of players in this side still doing their HSC. Mm. Talking to Michael Babich beforehand, it's always difficult for them because next year they'll lose a lot of them to university and they'll have to start all over again. But they've got a good structure down there. Mm. That's a similar problem for Ugali with their when Shrews. A lot of them will move away for uni and that sort of thing. Can meant to deliver. Swings towards the far post and their head has come in. It's an opportunity for Wagga City Wanderers. Might be a threat on the set piece today. Good delivery that from Mensa. It was met by Dylan Burke, I think that was. Yeah, found him out to the far post. Looks like the ball's gone over the fence. Dylan Burke, based in Kudamandra, I understand. So, travels an hour or so to training. And back again. It's difficult to n not to comment on the commitment of the players travelling to Canberra every other week for matches. Like you say, four hours from Ugali, not much less from, from, uh, from Wagga. 
Mm. And Ugali also lost their home games sort of halfway through the season due to the COVID restrictions, so they had to play at Cootamundra, so they'll travel in two hours for home games. So it's hard to begrudge them a doubt in the sunshine at Deakin Stadium. In the glorious sunshine that it is. 24 and a half degrees here today. So we're told. We're told it feels like 21, but it does feel like 24 and a half. <laughs> Although that's probably because it's been minus 6. Yeah, I was going to say, you boys were up in the freezing cold last week, so this will be, this will be heaven. Nice turnaround for us, to be honest. Here's Isaac Donadell in midfield. Breaks for Jacob Donadell. Roddy looks to use his pace to get in behind here. Can he deliver something into the air? It's a decent ball in. And whack clear by Moffat. Happy to send it into the Ivan Bullum stand. We're going to have a change here already for Ugali. It's Joe Price. Mason Donadell is coming on, yeah. And Joe Priest is going off in the early stages. This is a bit of a blow for Luke Santley and his team. He was nursing a bit of a knock leading into the clash, so I wonder if it's come back to bite him. Well, certainly looks like it. He's lasted less than 10 minutes. Joe Priest, who was one of the standouts for Riverina Rhinos in their time in the NPL here in Canberra. It's a great opportunity for young Mason Donadell, though. Only 16 years old, so to be running on an NPL 2 grand final with 80 minutes ahead of him. The third Donadell in the middle of the park now. Here's Bavaresco swinging it into the penalty area. Roche with a header and saved by Robert Fry, the diminutive striker. It always amazes me when the smallest person on the field manages to win a header in the box, especially up against central defenders, but... Got a fair piece of that as well, didn't he? He did. Robert Fry well placed. He's been with Wagga City since the inception of the club. Most of the threat coming from Ugali in the opening stages. Grant Davidson. 42 years old, still going strong. Bajanti, Isaac Donadell, flick from Roche. Oh, Allen, caught a bit late there and the free kick will be given. Elijah Brook has been busy in the opening stages as well, putting himself around. Yeah, there's a sole person, so Wagga Wanderer up forward, so he'll be busy up against Pandolfo and Davidson looking to create space. Tough test against those two experienced boys, though. Flanagan with a free kick. That's towards Smith, but he's beaten to it. Donadell finds Sears. But loose in the middle of the field. Here's Matoi. His first real involvement. It's bypassed the midfield in the early stages, hasn't it? Yeah, it's very much been attack to defense, or defense to attack. Davidson here a year in the Highland League in Scotland as well. Scottish influence in, 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 in what's a very much Italian influence club is Roddy looking to put the Jets on into the penalty area again Burkray defends and Shuttleworth can bring it forward welcome to the switch and he's picked him out here's Allen he's got a pass Bavaresco he's got past Isaac Donadell oh. can't get past Mason Donadell <laughs> Bit of a skew with pass. Walker City Wanderers themselves started playing in Griffith in 2013 under the name Eastern Wanderers. Changed to Walker City Wanderers in 2014 as part of the Wagga Wagga FA and played in the New South Wales State League before coming here. This is Matoi. Chance for him to stretch the legs. Finds Mensa. Just goes through the gears and it's a tackle by Isaac Donadell. He felt like he got a fair bit of the ball, but the freak has been given. Now this is in prime territory for someone of Matt Mensa's ilk. Looked like he did get a fair bit of the ball. He might have just come from behind as well, which might have worked against him. Isaac Brooker behind it as well. This will be a test for Michael DePauli, perhaps the first one of the afternoon. The youngster from Ballarat, Isaac Brooker. He's a Griffith boy, been playing down in Victoria. He's left it for the more experienced Mensa. As I said, he's had previous at this venue at that end. It's Matt Mensa over the free kick, bends it towards a goal and a good stop from Michael DePauli. 
to palm it over the bar. First of all, shot in anger. Yeah, that's what you kind of expect from the Ugalic stop shot stopper. He's been a regular for a number of years now. Very won, experienced. Won six, six premierships he's won, Marco Depaoli. They do tell me, though, that his biggest ever moment was a 89th minute bicycle kick he scored going up for a corner. He has been known to go forward. It was quite agil agile to score a bicycle kick. Showed his agility there as well. Brooker challenging. It's going to fall for Mensa. Couldn't get it under control. Here's Bavaresco. And the chance for Mason Donald to be involved. Roche tries to turn away from Logan Flanagan, who's done well, the young defender. Big ask to come in for your first start in a grand final, isn't it? Especially up against the speedy Ugali attack. He's going to have his work cut out for him. Shuttleworth lifts it towards Mensa, and Davidson just shepherds him back to De Pauli. Two of the more experienced players on the park. As I said, Grant Davidson, 42 years old, playing in the grand final today. That's a, some experience to be bringing to the occasion. It is. And he'll be dangerous from set pieces with the height. As played as a striker before, so... Lovely ball from Isaac Donadell. Off goes Roddy again. We've seen his pace on a couple of occasions so far. Can he deliver? He's got a deflection, and he's won his team a corner. Yeah, we have won a few corners in the opening stages of the game. They'll be looking to capitalise on one of these shortly. Yeah, Roddy having the better of his duel with William Shuttleworth. The young left uh, right back from Wagga City in the early stages. Roche in the area, as is Isaac Donadell. Davidson has, is making his way forward on the far post. Roddy with a set piece. Bajanti on the goal line. It's in towards there. Fry gets a good fist on it. Might come out for Bavaresco. Lines one up from distance. Mensa got the block in. Jacob Donadell keeping the pressure on. Roddy up against Smith, and Smith comes out the winner on that occasion, but Shuttleworth's turned it over again. Roddy lifts it into the air, but there's nobody there. It's been a decent start from you, Gully. Yeah, they'll be looking to make the most of the pressure they put on early. Plenty of famous players play for you, Gully. Walter Valeri, Bobby Noble, Ian Hayward, Chris Tanti. Baz Gianpaolo, all from Canberra, have all won the yellow and blue shirt at one point or other in the past. And all been part of a remarkable haul of 32 Premiership trophies. And a fair haul of those have come in the last several years for the club. Darren Bailey, who's in uh, Canberra now, playing for Balcony United as a, another former Ugali Soccer Club player. Not to be confused with Ugali Football Club, of course. No, don't want to be making that mistake. It won't be very popular if you do that. I made that mistake once at the start of the season. I was quickly corrected. <laughs> Two different entities entirely. Much love lost between those two, Liam? Oh, that was a very strong rivalry there, Russ. Always very fiery. Last year's grand final between those two sides. Well, if you just tuned in, you're watching live football on Bar TV Sports. Bonus football, MPL2 Grand Final from Deakin Stadium. Ugali nil, Wagga City Wanderers nil. Ball forward, Roche in again. Fry quick off his line. Made the decision to come. It was a good decision too. Flanagan just rode the challenge of Bajanti and comes away with it. And is brought down there by Bavaresco. Looks to the man at Bourne here, does Logan Flanagan. He does. He's performed quite well in the opening stages. Pavaresco might be getting his last warning here, I think. It's a couple of times he's had a nibble. First at Allen and then at Logan Flanagan. Flanagan, well, he's not really thought about that one. I think Roddy's going to pick it off. He's fortunate. Might fall for Shuttleworth. Roddy has it. Here's Isaac Donadell. Bit of space in which to work. And... He's invited Bajenti forward, but it just rolls away off the service here at Deakin Stadium. Credit to the ground staff here. They've had masses of games through this in the past few weeks. Four a weekend for the last month or so, and a couple more today. Pitch is looking great. It's in pristine condition for this late in the season. Atawi goes forwards. Padolfo under pressure from Brooker. Does well to nod it back to his keeper. The Wagga City crowd was pretty raucous in the under-23s match. They built into that game, didn't they, as a support base? I did. 
They would have been nervous going into the penalty shootout. Some good penalties in that shootout, actually, if you haven't seen them. It's worth a look back on the video. From both teams, ANU the defeated side. Win by Sears. Roddy. Already looks like a bag of tricks, doesn't he? That's a good ball as well, looking for Roche in behind Burkray. Trying to stand him up. Donadell arriving here. It's Isaac Donadell from range. Cut across the ball and didn't test Robert Fry. But again, that long ball and the pace and movement of Calvin Roddy is causing Wagga City Wanderers all manner of problems. It is, and the link up play between the two Visa players in Roddy and Roche is something that look more dangerous as the game wears on. Full of goals this season, as I mentioned, Ugali. Beat Brindabella Blues 4 1, O'Connor 4 0, 6 against the White Eagles, 4 against ANU, 7 against Narrabunda. So we know they have the ability. The game against White Eagles was quite a game, with I think three goals in the opening 10 minutes. Roche with a hat trick that, that, that day, Bajenti with a couple, Davidson got on the target as well. Wagger have had their moments this season too. They beat Narabana 8-2. Elijah Brooker with four goals that day. 3-0 wins over Brindabella and O'Connor Knights to their name as well. Big loss of Luke Stevens today, of course, though. Here's Mensa. Chance for Matt Mensa. Lifted over the keeper and Wanderers lead. Mensa rolls back the years and puts his side in front. In the blink of an eye. Yeah, you can kind of say that's going against the run of play because Ugali have dominated the early stages, but I guess it only really takes one chance. And Mensa took it to lob it over Michael DePoli and into the back of the net. I said here previous at this venue at that very end, and Matt Mensa does it again, and the underdogs are in front, much against the run of play, and just a little bit of magic when it was needed, and he pulls one out of the hat. Eighth of the season. For the veteran midfielder, none as important. Now we'll see what Ugali have got in response. The important thing will be for the boys not to drop their heads after the early goal. Because they've been well and truly on top, they just need to find that. Find that breakthrough. But coming on, nothing, isn't it? Just a throw in into the area as it swung towards a far post from Roddy. Here, just a throw in out of nothing. Mensa's a little turn and a delightful finish. Or with the outside of the boot. Roddy wasn't too far away for a bit of a scross to get the, the early goal back. Well, we mentioned they do score a lot of goals. Have conceded a few as well across the uh, last couple of games. That's the, there's two in the semi-final, two against Western Malonga in a surprise loss in round nine. Not as tight as I'd like to be, but they've got to come from behind. And the Wanderers with Allen looking for a break down the middle. Davidson in the way, but Allen's back in, snapping into the challenge. He's come for Brooker. Lovely touch in the middle of the park from Mason Donadell. Here's Roche. He's had a couple of half chances, and that's a nice switch. Well, right idea from Jacob Donadell. Just a bit too long. Okay. There'll be no panic there, will there, Liam, from, from this Wagga City, uh, from this Ugali side, I should say? No, they've got pl there's plenty of grand final experience out there that'll be looking to keep the boys' heads in the right spot. And they know but they've got goals in them, so... But I think from a neutral point of view, it's probably exactly what we wanted, wasn't it? A Wagga City goal to... Adds to the spectacles, most certainly. You know, really bring Ugali out of their shell. A chance here for Roddy with the corner. Sense uh, throwing a few more shirts forward this time. Still not overly packing the penalty area, only four to aim for. But Roddy swings it towards the far post. Donadell arrives, tries to knock it back into the middle. On the turn is Bajanti, but he can't squeeze his way past the mass ranks of the Wanderers' defence. Yeah, tra probably tried to track on a few too many then. Might have been better off passing to the top of the box and then recycling. Top scorer at the local level for the last two seasons. Mitch Bajanti brought his form into this team with nine this season. That's him with the flick. Matoi, then thrashed forward 
by Ben Smith who swapped flanks with Tyler Allen. You see it a lot these days, don't you? Wingers swapping flanks half an hour or 20 minutes or so into a match. Test out the other side and look for those gaps. It gives the fullback something to think about, doesn't it? Jacob Donadell's touch. Here's Isaac Donadell. Bajanti. Mason's open in the middle. Isaac Brooker was back in there doing the midfield work. Moffat sends it forwards. Davison steps in front of Elijah Brooker and can bring it forward. No challenge on the defender. Well, the Catley tried to put it through. Here's Smith up against Bavaresco on a warning, remember? Forces him backwards. Moffat, one of the Academy products, plenty of them in this Wagga City lineup. Sears won it. Roddy. Bajanti. Flag was up for offside. The pattern said, isn't it? it Your Gali having plenty of possession, but Wagga looking reasonably dangerous on the break, and they have the crucial goal. Yeah, it looks like they've set themselves up to hit Yogali on the counter. And it worked, so. Kickoff was delayed half an hour, of course, here today because of the penalty shootout in the under 23s grand final. Roche goes backwards. Davidson finds Roche. A little change of pace and direction. He can't force it past Moffitt. They're dropping back in defence really well. The wonder is at the moment closing down Yugali's opportunities. Mensa. Elijah Brooker invites Mensa forward again. Nice ball and he stayed on side here. Tracking back was from Isaac Donadell and he's conceded the corner. And Morgan City and Michael Babich I think will be pretty pleased with what they've seen so far. They've put the nerves back on you, Garley, now. They're looking a bit, a bit rattled. A couple of unforced errors. Chance for Mensa to turn supplier. Good ball in and was noddy clear. I think it was Sears at the back post. Roche looks to twist and turn and sends it towards Bajanti and it was almost a decent ball too and Isaac Brooker stuck out a leg. Not much in the way of midfield at the moment, Liam. It's just one end to the other, isn't it? It is. Loose one from Isaac Donadell. Allen. Flanagan slides it through good ball to Elijah Brooker on his own looks for Allen out to the right hand side Sears is the shadow and does well to force the error well you wouldn't know those two young fullbacks in Colby Sears and Logan Flanagan on opposite flanks and they've had quite composed starts of the game really given their age Looking back to the goal, you wonder whether the early loss of Priest had anything to do with it, whether it was just a reshuffle. That might be affecting their go forward now. Not having the the run from Priest pushing back in defence as well probably will hurt you, Gully, a little bit as the game wears on. Well, Babbage has got his side well drilled. The two wide midfielders in now Allen and Smith back behind the ball defending when they need to be. Matawi concedes a free kick with a foul on Mason Donadell, the early substitutes. <coughs> a chance for Ugali once again to load some numbers into the penalty area and cause some havoc with the free kick. Towards the far base, Davidson stolen a march here momentarily got himself away from the defenders but the ball was just too high for him to get on the end of has found the net twice this season one of them was an absolute cracker from long range against Brenda Bella I believe in the first game of the season 
Yep. Is that a goal came in that 6-4 win over the White Eagles that we mentioned earlier? Jordan Bavaresco ruptured his ACL last year, so it's a good recovery for him to be back and playing and making the grand final. It did. It's great to see him back out there after what would have been a pretty rough year for the youngster. Smith nods it forwards. Elijah Brooker goes back to Isaac Brooker. Loses out again, but Isaac Brooker, tenacious, snaps into the tackle. You got him missing Andrew Vitucci today. He was at a cruising, as I mentioned, pre-match. I think he's a godfather or something, yeah. so he couldn't really miss that one, unfortunately, for him. Maybe he's sneakily watching it if it's on at the same time. Pandolfo sends it forward. Shuttleworth wins the header. Donadell snaps into the tackle, but again, the touch is a little bit loose in the middle of that park. They've not settled in the middle of the field. No, that's been, that's been one downside for you, Gali, when the ball has been in the midfield, which hasn't been too often. It's been turned over pretty quickly. Mensa. The force his way past Sears. Nice touch, Roche. Good challenge in the middle by Anna Matsawi. He's doing his HSC. He's captain the under-18s last year. Anna Matsawi stepped up to first grade. Along with a plethora of other under-18s players. Isaac Donadell. Bajanti. Taking on Flanagan. Getting past Flanagan. Can't run it out of play in the end. Wasn't quite able to get away from the Wanderers defence and get the cross in he would have liked. Ran into a cul-de-sac really, didn't he? There wasn't much room down there to, to move for Mitch Bajanti. There's Allen flicking on himself and now he's got the pace to get away from Colby Sears. He has briefly, but Sears is back goal side. Allen twisting and turning, and then leaving a foot in on Jacob Donadell. But the free kick free has kick gone the other way, has way. it? Must have been a foul on Allen initially. I think it was, uh, yeah, by Sears. He had a shirt pull, I think. What a chance from the set piece again. Jacob Dondo won't be too impressed because he <laughs> got up to saw one straight afterwards. He did. Isaac Brooker over the free kick. Burkray's made his way up from the back. Smith has adds a bit of height in there as well. It's a flatter delivery. It's Smith who got the flick on and it almost came for Mensa. I think Smith was disappointed he didn't get a bit more on that. It wasn't a badly worked set piece. It almost found Mensa at the back post and you go league defence will be Asking how he got so open. Well, he flits between the lines, doesn't he, Matt Mentor? He causes all sorts of issues because you don't know whether to pick him up, whether it's a defensive problem or a midfield problem. And you could see it with the goal. It's the goal that separates the sides. Quarter of an hour to go in the first half of the MPL2 Grand Final, and it is the Wagga City Wanderers who have the advantage. There's a bit of a slice there from Robert Fry. Yeah, put his side under a bit of pressure now. Yeah, the defence weren't thinking about that. Immediate apology there for the goalkeeper. Colby Sears with the throw in front of the Ugali stand. You can see the Eforte e Vicera. That's my Italian. I hope that's right. Sign they have there. Roddy. We did look like that up before kickoff. What, what did it, was it uh, to Will and Win or something? A strong will and win. It's a strong, strong will and win. Or yeah. Yeah, something along those lines. The Ugali motto, and they'll need to dig in today if they are to get the win. Roddy's looked most likely lively for them, and he's looked most likely way back into this one. Good crossfield ball by Janty. Brings it under his spell. Off he goes, another one of those weaving runs, looking to take on Flanagan, looking to pull it back, real chance in the penalty area. Brooker's back defending, got it stuck under his feet. Oh, and there's something wrong with Bajanti as well. It looks like he's pulled up a bit sore there. He was another one that was carrying a niggle into the game, so hopefully it hasn't popped back up again. 
We'll keep an eye on that one, whether he's tweaked something or whether he just rolled an ankle. He doesn't. He doesn't look too good at the moment. Roche was battling. He's still got it, Roche, momentarily, but he's made the foul on Logan Flanagan. So there's one to keep an eye on as well. Mitch Bajanti. They've already lost Joe Priest, as we mentioned earlier. Hopefully it's just a tweak for the right-sided forwards. Here's Flanagan. Moffat. Davidson with the header. Bavaresco. Davidson. Adolfo, no press on him at all. Happy to let them have the ball at the back there. Yeah, Bill. not too dangerous from back there, so I think Wanderers are just letting them have it. Well, Moffitt Looking under pressure. Dangerous. Fry came. He's only found Roddy. Chasing back with Burkray. And then a little kick out. There was a bit of a breeze there, wasn't there? There was a blustery bit of wind, and I think it caught out Robert Fry. Just at the inopportune moment for the Wagga keeper. Luckily, it came to nothing from his perspective. He makes his mind up early, doesn't he? And he does come, and don't mind that in a goalkeeper, do you, if he's, if he's playing the sweeper-keeper? Well, that's what you want. You don't want the keeper second-guessing himself, because that'll cause problems to the defence. Allen's touch. Slip forward to Roche, looks to send it around the corner. Down went Bajenti. There was half a shout for a penalty. There was only half a shout. A bit optimistic from the Ugali supporters, I think. Yeah. I'm hearing from my Italian friend, Andrew Condobadero. It's Vincera. The, the emphasis on the A. It is strong. It will win. There we go. Thanks, Adam. For also tuning in and clearing that one up for us. It's Mason Donadell. Creates himself a bit of space. Tried to squeeze it through the gap. Here's Isaac Donadell. Plenty of possession from Ugali since they've gone behind. Plenty of possession before they went behind. Yeah, and Wagga had all ten flies behind the ball, so... Roche looking to squeeze his way through. And the bounce almost came back in his favour. Cutting a bit of a frustrated figure there, Danny Roche at the moment. Don't want to give him half a chance though, 11 goals this season. That's probably handball against Bavaresco. It's been some intriguing individual duels out there, hasn't there? Shuttleworth against Roddy on the far side, and Logan Flanagan against Bajanti down on this near side as well. Bavaresco's been busy too. That's a good ball as well. Again, Roche looking to play off the shoulder of the last man. You can see why Wagga don't want to be too high up the park, can't you? You can't really risk Roche being able to get him behind because he's got plenty of speed to burn. Smith. Looking for Allen. Challenges with Sears. Roddy with the defensive duties. Now again looking for Roche, who's using that pace to get away, but he's come from an offside position. Damon Van Putten with the decision. Ugali were top of the table after eight rounds, 21 points with a 21 plus goal difference. Wagga City back in third with 14 points. Pretty competitive top four picture, wasn't it? There was only four points between sixth and fourth. Decided in the last round with the, the catch up games. And it's only going to be more competitive next year. Of course, there's the added incentive, I believe, of promotion to MPL1 next year for the side that finishes top of the pile. Both these sides would have aspirations of doing exactly that, of course. Especially the Ugali boys who already have a bit of experience from the Rhino days. Didn't really work out for them in the, in those days, did they? They had a couple of moments here and there, and there was there was a game we did together down at the Solar Mad Stadium, which was probably one of their best results, a 1-0 win over Canberra Olympic. Real smash and grab effort, wasn't it? Mm. I think it's fair to say they were on the back foot for most of that. Goal in the 89th minute from memory. It was right at the death, wasn't it? 
remarkable ending to that one. Could do with something similar at the moment. They're trailing in Moffat. Burkray. Shuttleworth happy to go home to Fry. <coughs> He's left that a bit short and Roddy can prod it back in the direction of Roche. We talked about Mark Manson's influence on the game. I'll ask you about this in a second. Liam, I could do it now as a place. How long do you think he's got in him? Can he play the full 90 today, or given the, given the conditions, given the weather? I reckon he'll push himself to play the full 90. I guess it depends on the game situation, really. Certainly had the decisive moment so far. But Genty, there was a screen for a free kick, not given. Flanagan finds Mensa. Will swivel on the spot, looks to slide it through to Allen, and he's got him in it behind here. Here's Allen in on goal. Great challenge from Colby Sears, the young 17 year old, belying his years. Wonderful cover. Once again, Sean Wise kind of cemented that left back position after the injury to Andrew Keady in the first game of the season. With Tyler Allen for a moment, had half a yard on him. Sears spotted the danger. So just again, another glimpse of what Matt Mensah brings to this team in terms of his distribution as well. Perfect ball through. Allen perhaps just not quick enough to take advantage. Here's Davidson again allowed to run a long way forwards and tries to find Badjanti but the flag went up. You mentioned that goal he scored against Brindabella earlier in the season from range. You'd think if he keeps carrying it forward like this, he might line one up before long. Well, if he's not being closed down, he might as well just have the pot shot because it might be the best chance that you go to get at this rate. He's been able to, allowed to come forward a fair old distance by the Wagga City Wanderers defence. Not sure Moffat's best delivery that one. Bavaresco, Mason Donadell round the corner to Isaac Donadell. We're going to move the ball a little bit quicker. Bavaresco charging forward again though, just over hits. But when there is, and there is a little bit behind us, it's it's probably behind you'd say Ugali in the first half. Yeah, bound towards their goal. Just need to polish that final fast forward. And Flanagan, crossfield ball looking for Allen. Sears reads a bounce. Roddy. Again, Ugali happy to build from the back. Davidson looks for the longer ball. Shuttleworth was there. He's trodden on it, giving himself a problem here. Off goes Roddy. Looks for the strike from distance. Then asked why he didn't get the free kick. There was a nibble at the heels there from William Shuttleworth. I guess the referee had argued he probably used the advantage and bound out to get the shot away. Which is exactly what Nathan Shakespeare is explaining to Calvin Roddy. Who's not impressed. A striker's ever impressed when they think they've been fouled and haven't got the free kick though, Ross? Very, very rarely. If ever. <laughs> Just could keep plugging away. I think Roddy has had a good half. So is Roche. And he gets a free kick. Matawi with the foul. And a chance for Davidson to get forward again. And with five minutes to go in the half, would be an opportune time for Ugali to strike back. And Roddy's been dangerous with his set pieces, so he'll be looking to put another good one into the box. A bit of pace on this one. Might cause a problem or two for Robert Fry. Down with a one man wall. Can he pick out a yellow shirt? It's swung into the area. Fry came. Got a fist on it. Good decision. There's a massive appeal from both teams. The decision goes Ugardi's way. Bavaresco to take the throw. Isaac Donadell. Back to Bavaresco. Oh, he's just taking his half the ball. It's a bit of a coach killer, that one. 
very much a community club, Wagga City Wanderers. All these players in first grade do some sort of coaching with the SAP program on the academy program there, or one team or another, giving back to the club. And they all play registration as well. Playing for the love of the game, of course. I mean, when you get to play on a day like this, why wouldn't you? Makes it all worthwhile, doesn't it? It makes all the journeys worthwhile, and if they go home with the results, it'll be even better for them. Yigali, though, will have something to say about that. Here's Alan. The Tawi. Stretches the legs, looks to find Smith, but Davidson used all his years of experience to just read the pass. Loose ball again, though. Elijah Brooker. Isaac Brooker. Smith. Good ball to Allen. Look for the first time ball to Elijah Brooker. Didn't come off, but nice idea though. Might have a, could have had time to take a touch there, maybe, Tyler Allen. Might have had a chance to. Had his mind made up early though, didn't he, that he wanted to go wide. Two and a half minutes to go, plus stoppage time in the first half. Isaac Donadell, Badjanti. Bajanti back up again and going and away from Flanagan. Looking to deliver, but again, it's over hit. Showed some promise, Mitch Bajanti, just the final ball hasn't quite come off for him just yet. Been the same story for most of the teammates too, to be fair. It's just that they're getting into the final third, they just can't make that breakthrough. Been a long season on Bar TV Sports. It's been great to bring you all the action from MPL1 through most of the year in the MPLW2 is Roche bringing the ball down he's got Mason Donadell as an option here is Mason Donadell slice it by Janty was there it's still by Janty might come for Donadell Wanderers get away with it briefly Roche looked to tee himself up Isaac Donadell and the handball is given and that was half a chance there for Mason Donadell slices his shot, but it almost turned into a beautiful pass to Bajanti. I wonder if Mitch might have been better off leaving it to Donadell on the follow-up rather than trying to take it back in himself. There was a little bit of panic in the Wanderers' defence briefly. That's not helping themselves out. Neither is that touch in the middle of the park. Mensa has robbed Donadell and he's found Allen out wide. Elijah Brooker, the target in the middle, and he almost fouled him from Tyler Allen. Now Ugali looking to break with a minute to go. Roche the target again for Bavaresco as he has been for most of the afternoon but they haven't got that one right yet. Got him in in the first instance didn't they early on denied by Robert Fry. I feel like they've also got to worry about not being too predictable. If they're going to Roche all the time the Wanderers defence will know who to look out for. Well, Danny Roche fell in the lap of Ugali as Luke Santolin said. I think they had an Estonian striker on the books that had to go back because of visa issues and COVID. And uh, Danny Roche sent them an email, said a fancy a game. It wasn't a bad pickup for him. I don't think it took Luke Sampling long to decide that he'd keep him in the squad. No. And he's picked up the top goal scorer. Burke race ball forward, has been picked off by Isaac Donadell. Here he is again, into stoppage time. Only a minute to add on. Problems for Burke right here, of his own making. Isaac Donadell, perhaps the last chance of the first half, invites Roddy down the left flank and he's cut inside here. Calvin Roddy got the shot away, but it lacked the oomph to test Robert Fry. Might have been better off trying to get into the middle of the box, but in the last couple, of, in the dying stages of the first half, I guess you try and take the shot off. Fly was behind it all the way. Happy to launch it as far away from his goal as is possible. Smith has it, four Wanderers. Off on a run. Tries to get away from, my, uh, from Jacob Donadell. Bavresco again looks for Roche. Moffitt picked it off. Isaac Brooker's giving it away. Isaac Donadell wide. Roddy, bit of space. Time ticking away at the end of the first half. Swings it into the penalty area, and that was deep.
dipping just before Fry got there and that will be the last action of a first half in which Ugali are fairly dominated in terms of possession but it's Wagga City Wanderers who have the advantage. They'll definitely be disappointed going the half time down but the Wanderers will be very pleased with their first half performance. They managed to hold the dangerous Ugali side out and hit him on the break. So they'll take the lead in half time which will be very pleasing. The underdogs in front, the lead champions have much to do. 45 minutes to save themselves in this MPL2 final. At the break, Matt Mentor's goal, 20 minutes in, is the difference. It's Ugali nil, Wagga City Wanderers 1.
Welcome back to Deakin Stadium, second half of the MPL2 Grand Final about to kick off in a couple of minutes' time. I'm Russ Gibbs, your commentator, joining me for the second half, as you did the first, is area news sports journal Liam Warren. Liam, we were talking off air at half-time. Can we see Ugali finding a way back into this, and the consensus was fairly unanimous? I think they'll be able to find their way back into it, especially now that Rich Bajanti's shaking off that little knock that he picked up in the first half. Hopefully he might be able to get that through. Looks like he's putting some magic spray on it now as we speak. Bit of spray, bit of water. Always does the difference, doesn't it? So 45 minutes between Wagga City Wanderers and an MPL2 grand final victory. Which seemed unlikely at kickoff. It did. It seemed unlikely at a lot of stages in the first half as well. They made the critical breakthrough though after 18 minutes. Matt Mensah who, as we said, has scored plenty of goals in Canberra and a few on this field before as well. This one will be right up there in the memory books for him, especially if it turns out to be a winner from a completely neutral point of view. We're hoping for a few more goals in this half. It'd be nice. Wouldn't be surprised if it does go the extra time, but... Looks like the teams were as we were for the start of the second half. Can you see any changes out there, Liam? Doesn't look like Not it. Not for the Ugali boys. It doesn't seem like anything has changed for Wagga either. Ugali on the attack straight away. Bajanti. The swing something into the penalty area. And an early warning, similar to the first half, getting into position, not quite being able to find the requisite accuracy with his delivery. The Ugali team, De Pauli in goal, Bavaresco, Pandolfo, Davidson, Sears. The midfield trio, all Donadels, Isaac, Mason and Jacob. Roddy, Roche and Bajanti, the front three. Walker City, Fry in goal, Shuttleworth, Burkray, Moffat and Flanagan across the back. Matsui, Isaac Brooker and Mensa in midfield. Smith, Elijah Brooker and Allen, the front three. Here's Shuttleworth. Lifted forwards and... Elijah Brooker was waiting for the bounce. Luke Pandolfo wasn't. Hard worker, Elijah Brooker. He's got four goals this season. All four in one game. But he gets her a ton of work up there, Liam. He was the target man in the first half. and Most things going forward for the Wanderers side, so... It'll be not danger in the second half as well, I imagine. Matui. Moffat. The longer this goes, though, you wonder how more the experience of Mensa and maybe Carl Podesky off the bench will come to the fore as they try and see this young team through. Having some of the quality of Podesky on the bench is going to help the Wanderers, I reckon. Watched a bit of the under-23s as well. I'm quite impressed with Daniel Ocheng. Caused all sorts of issues up front and cannon of a shot as well. We might see him at some stage for Wagga City. Here's Roddy lifting it forward. Roche the willing runner as always, but Fry has that under control. There's Davidson with a super little flick back to his goalkeeper. All his years of experience. Pandolfo, he's won six premierships as well, so plenty of experience with him too. A lot of the boys would have won two or three over the last couple of years with the Ugali side, so there's a lot of grand final experience in there. Most of us would be happy just to win one, so have half a dozen in your name on your trophy cabinet. Or I think the closest I've come is a joint premiership, which is a still counts. Life. Still counts. <laughs> <laughs> just don't tell anyone it was joint. Yeah. <laughs> Here's Roddy, Donadell, Shuttleworth volleys it forwards. Davidson has plenty of time though. Bavaresco, Bajanti from deep, Davidson, Isaac Donadell, again the long angle ball looking for Roddy, it was a ball they tried in the first half on numerous occasions, Shuttleworth this time was alert to the danger. The Wanderers still seem pretty happy to just let the Ugali boys play it behind the defence. Touch from Isaac Donadell has found Roche. Quick feet and bags of tricks. Roddy. 
Bajenti, lovely flick and a chance for Mason Donadell, defended well by Dylan Burkray to snuffle out the chance briefly. It's coming back again. And once more, though, the delivery just wasn't there for them. And the crossing from out wide really has let you go down the last couple of chances that they've had going forward. Mavarisco's touch might have been a bit hard to begin with, so he didn't have much time to sort of take the touch and compose himself. In numerous times they've been in down the flanks and haven't found the killer ball. But so he looks for one over the top of Bavaresco. It's a decent knock as well. Smith, runners ahead. Tries to pick out Elijah Brooker. Couldn't do so. And it's Ugali's turn to try and turn defence into attack. Snuffed out by Shuttleworth. Lovely take, uh, take by Mensah. Off to Isaac Brooker. Tries his luck from distance. Wasn't too far away, but Michael DePauli had it covered. Lovely little roll of the shoulder from Mensah again there, just to take him away from his marker. He's showing why he's going to be a danger in the second half. Davidson looks for Roche. His touch finds Isaac Donadell. Roddy, Roddy's ball forward. Burkray didn't get much on that, but he got enough on it. Sears is Pandolfo again looks for Badjanti brings it down nicely and again Logan Flanagan sticking manfully to the task for against the nine goal striker for someone making the debut in the MPL 2 grand final he's doing an outstanding job on the on the left yeah, he's been off the bench a couple of times but this is his first start mostly been playing in the under 23s Here's looks like, Roddy. Looks like he might have picked up a bit of a knock in that. Roddy has it back again, looking to open up the angle, and that's took a deflection off Shuttleworth, and I think Robert Fry was very happy. That's what you were saying? I think that's probably the best chance that you have had, but yeah, it looks like uh, Flanagan's gone down with a bit of a knock to the back from contest with Roche on the edge of the box. It was a sore one if you get a little bit of a knee in the back. Options for Wagga City on the bench. Zach Pitty's a midfielder, Carl Podesky's a midfielder. A couple of forwards in Jacob Brooker and Daniel o Ocheng. So, be a reshuffle of formation if they lost Logan Flanagan. Hopefully, he can run that one off. Roddy with the set piece. Six yellow shirts in and around the box. Swung in towards the far post. Davidson was the target. It's going to come out for Pandolfo. Isaac Brooker did enough. Matsui. Sends it forwards. Elijah Brooker again challenging. That one's out the grounds from Colby Sears. Someone's going to have to go fetch that. It might be you, Liam. Maybe we can get the kangaroos back to get the ball. <laughs> yeah, I haven't seen the kangaroo for a while. Had his 15 minutes, didn't he? Elijah Brooker looking to take on Pandolfo. Well, he hasn't really got himself into a goal-scoring position this afternoon just yet, Elijah Brook. He has been an absolute pest and a nuisance. He has put plenty of pressure on the central defenders from Ugali and probably helped to create that space for Matty Mensah's first goal. Shuttleworth with the throw. Looks for Mensah. Sat up horribly for him, but he's done well with the improvised volley into the area. Now, here's a chance on the break, perhaps, but again, it's over-hit once more. Out of your shot there, Mitch Bajanti. Wanted it on the floor. Well, that's a wish feet so it can be twinkle toes. Very good at turning out of tough situations. Shuttleworth with the throw again. Smith. Matoi. Running in circles. Lovely touch from Elijah Brooker. Smith. Can he get away from Sears? Coming together. And the decision goes the way of the Wanderers. Dangerous position for the galley defence. A real opportunity from this set piece. See how many they commit to the attack. It doesn't look like it's going to be many. Dylan Burkray, Tyler Allen and Elijah Brook are the only three in the penalty area at the moment. Guess they're a bit wary of being hit on the counter by the new galley speed. Ben Smith joining them on the edge of the box. Matt Mensah over the set piece. His goal, the difference. Can he provide turn provider? Mensa with the free kick swings it into the danger zone. It's half cleared. 
Mason Donald, I'll make sure it's fully cleared. Matoi, good ball to find Smith. The ricochet is going to find its way to Mensa on the left foot, swinging it in, dangerous ball. Well dealt with. I think it was Pandolfo who got rid of it. In the time that the Wanderers have managed to get forward, they've looked dangerous, so you got to want to be careful that they can concede another one. Well, it's an off used football cliche. The next goal, though, is absolutely vital in this one. Mensa tried to find Smith, and away comes Donadell. Roche doing his work from deep. Mason Donadell forced to go wide. Roddy. Nice touch from Isaac Donadell to Roddy again, but they've lost out. Bavaresco back to defend and again being put under huge pressure by Brooker, who stopped in his tracks unceremoniously by Grant Davidson, who complains he got a bit of the ball there. But fairly robust challenge on Elijah Brooker. A very tough one to stop the run. Nathan Shakespeare says it's a free kick, stopped illegally. The free kick's going that wide, so it might have been one on Bavaresco. In, in the initial in the initial phase before the tackle. By the way, it is a Wanderers set piece again. It is Matt Mensa over it again. Smith, Allen and Brooker in the middle again. Again, not much to aim for. Can Mensa pick one out? He's gone for goal himself. And Marco De Pauli had a hearty mouth moment. It spat out of his hands, didn't it? And had the Wanderers interested briefly. He's not won the panic though, so it was all under control. That ricochets forward and nicely for Roddy. Can he deliver something towards Bajanti in the middle? And Shuttleworth tracked the run and tracked it well at the expense of a corner. One of the better deliveries from out wide for the Ugali side. It was a lucky intervention from the Wanderers, otherwise Bajanti would have been in on goal. Well, the set piece action switches to the other end. Calvin Roddy with the corner. Delivery in towards a cluttered penalty area. Everyone's missed it. Davidson picks up. Chance for Jacob Donadell to reload. Win for goal. Pandofa all the way back. Colby Sears ball sending him back towards his own goal. Bavaresco finds Roddy. Delivering from deep. Swings it in. He's found its way through here to Davidson. Real opportunity. And he snatched at it. And it's gone wide a goal. Great chance, Ugali. you got to wonder if that might prove costly for the Ugali side because that's probably been their best chance all game. I wonder if he was in two minds about whether or not to square it back up to Danny Roche, who was open on the far post. Well, the 42-year-old has snuck forward. He stayed up from the set for the free kick and got in behind. Really good opportunity. Couldn't get it on target, though. Good win from Isaac Brooker. Put himself about a bit in middle in the middle of the park. Is Roche looking to spin his marker and Moffat stuck to the challenge. It's Roddy looking to do a Matt Mensa off the throwing. I'm going to put the mockers on Wagga City, and I apologise if I do, but defensively they look fairly sound. They've done really well to keep the Ugali side out of it. In the game earlier in the year, they had trouble controlling the front four from Ugali, but they've done that really well today. So, lessons learned from that 3 1 defeat. Still plenty of time to go, though. The Tawi smashes that down the park. And it's all the way through to De Pauli. Is that a shot on target? <laughs> Ambitious call. Statsman's underneath this, they'll let us know. I don't know, might claim it. It's Bajanti. Ball at feet, chance to run at the Wanderers' defence. Got himself tied up in a knot in the first instance and again in the second. It's not been his day at the moment, is it? No, it looks like he's trying a bit too hard, if that's possible, and might have even picked up a knock in the slipping over. That yeah. groin injury might have come back. As Alan smashes that forward, yeah, he's 
tweak that groin in the first half, we thought, and you mentioned off air at half time that there was a knock he's been carried into this game. And that wouldn't have helped, would it? No, uh, not falling over twice wouldn't have helped. Mason Donadell, that's highly ambitious. All he's done there is find the Wagga City supporters. Head in hands a moment for the young substitutes. Call into action early, only 16 years old though. Great experience for him. We're running out in the NPL 2 Grand Finals. A great thing for the young 16 year old. And outside that pass, he probably hasn't really put a foot wrong. He came into it very, very early, didn't he, for Priest and slotted in seamlessly. Here's Roche. Moffat gets a bit too tight on that occasion. Quarter of an hour gone in the second half, live on Bar TV Sports, the home of grassroots football in Australia. It's Ugali Neil, Wagga City Wanderers 1 in the MPL 2 Grand Final. Matt Mensah's goal after 18 minutes, the difference. Ugali knocking on the door. Davidson long ball forward. Easy for Robert Fry. Seems like the boys in the box weren't quite in the same wavelength as the three kick takers. They have it back though, the yellow shirts. Bajanti turns into trouble. Allen gets a free kick. Isaac Donadell with a little bit of show of dissent. A bit of frustration, you might want to watch himself, he might be sent for 10. We don't want to be seeing people get the temporary dismissals. If you've listened to myself and Frank Casey throughout the year, we're not a big fan of the temporary dismissal. Stern talking to from the referee. I think that suffices on that occasion, doesn't it? Like you say, it was it was frustration. Matsui. Sears tried to help it down the line, but scuffed across it. Might see some movement on the bench as well for you, Gali, at some stage. Dominic Galuzzo, Samuel Rossiti. And Luke Santolin himself are options. Santolin did say the chances of him coming on were quite slim. His father and grandfather both coached and played for Ugali as well, Luke Santolin, so definitely a family thing. And he coached alongside his dad a few years ago as well. His mentor gets a bit fortunate off of Colby Sears in the first instance, but Sears comes away with it. Is Matoi. Matt Menton's got a brother that plays as well. Danny Menton plays locally for Burns Soccer Club. Another former Tuggerong United player, Danny Menton. I think he's here today watching his brother play. Here's Shuttleworth. And Jacob Donadell. To Isaac Donadell. Davidson, who had that chance a few moments back. The best one of the second half for Ugali so far. Roach teed that up and invited Moffat to make the challenge, and he does illegally so. He's good at doing that, for causing the free kick. Gone quickly to Mason Donadell. Bavaresco. Mason Donadell. Pandolfo. Slow build up for Ugali, and that's not the ball they wanted. They start all over again. Everybody in a black and white shirt back behind the ball, as you'd expect. Nice feet from Jacob Donadell to get away from Matoi. Here's Isaac Donadell. Roche. Thumps into the challenge, not once but twice. He's still going here. Roche, somehow he's still got the ball. A cluster of Wanderers jerseys around him. It's broken for Roddy. Defended well by Flanagan at the expense of a corner. Not sure how Danny Roche kept his feet there. He did an amazing job to get around about four Wanderers defenders then. It was just a shame he wasn't able to get the shot away. He did all the work. He's parked himself on the top of the six-yard box for this corner. Which Roddy delivers. Fry clutches from the sky. Nice confident piece of goalkeeping.
Only the one target downfield, that's Elijah Brooker. He'll be a willing runner after it, but the ball's probably going to beat him to that one. If you're Luke Santolin, Liam, how long is it before you do look to your bench? Or do you trust in the guys that are out there? I don't know, I guess you've got to consider how long Bajanti's going to be able to last for that groin issue. Unfortunate handball for Sean Moffitt. One well, of those ones that sits up horribly, didn't it? Yeah, the obvious sort of placement for that would probably be Dom Glutzo to come off of Bajanti if he can't make it through and he's hobbling a bit more now, so question might be asked soon. Yeah, he won't want to leave the fray, will he? No one wants to leave the fray at any stage, but particularly so on grand final day. Roddy with the free kick. Again, plenty of yellow shirts to aim for. Can he pick one out? He can't with that one. Matoi sliced it. Might fall here for Colby Sears. Looking to create the angle for the cross. And Shuttleworth happy to send that away. <coughs> Here's Mason Donadell. Got it through a non-existing gap. Bajenti doesn't look good, does he? And he's just signalled that he might need a sub here. Mitch Bajanti. As there's not too much movement on the bench just yet. Oh, Sammy Rossetti's getting up. Going for a run. <coughs> he signalled straight away that he needed to come off Bajanti. I think that, that tweak. It's just just seen him it's seen him out, hasn't it? an interesting substitution bringing Mercedes on because he's more of a defender so that might be a bit of a reshuffle the change hasn't been made yet of course so all the Wanderers uh, are you Ugali effectively playing with 10 because Bajanti is a bit of a passenger at the moment he's in a lot of pain I'm surprised he hasn't gone down nah I mean she doesn't want to go down <coughs> battle through for as long as he can touch for Mensa finds Brooker a lot of space for Allen here here's a chance for Tyler Allen closed down by Jordan Bavaresco it opened up suddenly for the winger couldn't take advantage well, well done by the young fullback to get back across to stop the shot well, that's a challenge on Roddy that Brooker didn't like and there's a little bit of afters why is it Brooker he's just letting Roddy know he wasn't too impressed and Roddy gets a yellow card pretty easy decision that one Pretty obvious decision there, coming in from behind with a high foot. Fairly was clattered into Brooker, didn't he? There wasn't much good that was going to come of it. Well, there's not much of Isaac Brooker in terms of stature, but gives as good as he gets in the middle of that park. And has been at the forefront of the Wagga City Wanderers engine room throughout this match. Snapping into tackles, getting involved. Allen tried the volley across field. <laughs> Donadell can bring it away to Roche. Roddy looks for Bajanti, who tried to play it over the top. The flag was up. Still, match Mitch Bajanti. He is hobbling over that towards the towards the uh, sideline, and eventually he succumbs and goes down. And this will precipitate a change for Luke Santel in the second of the afternoon and a second enforced by injury. Joe Priest in the first half, Mitch Bajanti in the second two of his more experienced players. And for the second week in a row, it's Priest and Bajanti who've had to go off, which is a bit of a shame for Luke. Looks like they push Mason Donzell out to Bajanti's position and move Grant Davidson up into the midfield to put Rossetti into the central defence. That's why you're here, Liam. Great spot. Samuel Rossiti. In fact, they pushed Davidson up to the striker position and moved Roche back to the attacking midfielder. Well, they've been going long to Roche in terms of his pace. Maybe they'll uh, now be hitting Davidson. It's a sizable target. And that's where it goes. And it'll be Davidson to challenge. He got up with Burkray. And then he leaves one in on, on Moffitt's, I think that was. Call that a defender's challenge, shall we? In the front third. 
Right up the field, looking a bit desperate, trying to win the ball back for his side. Well, we're halfway through the second half, and it's still Matt Mensah's goal that is the difference between the two teams. Flanagan. Roche finds Roddy, looks for Davidson. Try to get it under control. It's going to break for Donadell, and he can swing it to this near side to Mason Donadell, who's got half a yard here. Chance for him to run at Shuttleworth. Mason Donadell onto that left foot. Looking for an option in the area. Matsui comes across and snuffs out the tackle of the challenge. Super ball or super tackle, and now he's released Elijah Brooker. No wonder his defence has been outstanding since they've taken the lead. They have not really given Ugali a clear chance. And Whenever there's a half chance, it gets snuffed out fairly quickly, and if it's not the defenders, the midfield pair of Isaac Brooker and Arno Matawi are back there helping out. You get the feeling they'll need to do it for the rest of the game. As Ugali come looking, ball in from Roddy is easy pickings for Robert Fry. Well, there's no doubt Ugali are going to throw everything at this in the final 20 minutes. Well, I've got nothing to lose. You don't really want to go down asking questions of yourself in the grand final. You want to leave it all out there. Isn't it one of those things, how often you see it, a team that's so dominant through the year? Nine games they played this year, including the semi-final. Only lost once to Western Malonglo, won the other eight. That's the same story now in the 23s. ANU went through pretty much undefeated and lost that grand final as well. There's a card coming out here for Jordan Bavaresco. It's fair to say he's probably been on that since about 10 minutes in. Got a couple of warnings from the referee before that. It was a very early final warning. You have to be careful for the final 20 minutes of this one. There's a change here as well. It's the goal scorer, Matt Mensah, who's gone off. His goal after 18 minutes is the difference. Zach Penny comes on for Mensah. Well, we asked that long he might get through. He's got through about 70. He's done a very good job for his side. Giving them the lead news dangerous throughout the game. Moffat's turned it over to Roddy. Here's Davidson. Roche off on his bike. Moffat back to a tone and does so with a super sliding tackle. So Zach Pinney's come on. He's another academy player, 20 years old. Got himself on the score sheet earlier in the season in the 3 0 win over Brinda Bella. First thing he's got to do though is help his team defend. Yet another Ugali set piece. Roddy with the delivery again. Near post, Donadell was the target. He's out for a throw. I think it was Brooker who got back to defend that. It was a good clearing, Heather. Roddy is lining up a long throw here. Going to launch one towards Davidson at the near post. That's the target, and Davidson almost won that. Jacob Donadell's header. Bit of head tennis in the middle of the field. Allen with the high foot clearance. Matoi back in his general direction and Allen happy to nod it forward and Bavaresco can retrieve. Pandolfo, Mason Donadell's got a fair bit of space on this near side out of your picture. I think that's where Pandolfo's going to go. He's over overhit the pass, it. Unfortunately. Just, just snuck away from his marker quite quietly there, Mason Donadell. Here's Smith. There is Donadell looking to weave some magic up against Shuttleworth, who eases him out, but the free kick is given for the challenge by Smith earlier in the piece. Well, there's no sense of panic, is there, at the moment for you, Gali, but there is a little bit of a sense of urgency about what they're doing. 17 and a half minutes to play. Well, throwing Davidson forward probably shows their intent to try and find that equaliser. I think a bit more of a target man up forward. Well, as you said, Liam, they may as well throw everything at it, including the proverbial kitchen sink in the final 15 minutes or so that's left, plus stoppage time. Jacob Donadell looking to slide it through the gap. Slide rule pass. It's found its way to Davidson. He's cut inside onto that right foot. Davidson tried his luck from distance. The block was good. Now here's Allen. There might be a break on here if he can release Ben Smith. And that's a really important foot in 
by Colby Sears. Great interception by the young fullback. Needed to be made. Pandolfo. Donadell. Nicely done to get away from Shuttleworth, who's going to find himself in the book. William Shuttleworth, who's quietly going about his business today. It's part of that Wagga City back four. First player in black and white in the referee's notebook. And Jacob Donald will be hoping that this delivery is slightly better than the one that preceded it. As I said, in the penalty area. Davidson's there too. Roche sniffing around the penalty spots. Kevin really looking like he's going to run towards the far post as well. Can Jacob Donadell pick the right ball out? He's looked for Isaac Donadell. There was a little touch on it. Roddy fires it across goal. It's going to come its way wide for Mason Donadell, who looks to reload to the near post. Moffitt with the clearance. Warmly received by those in Walker City colours. The balls from out wide from Ugali have just like that quality. They need to sort of create a threat in the box. Bavaresco slides it forward. Here's Davidson. Roddy. Clips it over the top again. Was looking for the run of Isaac Donadell, but not quite on the same wavelength. Plenty of opportunities to get crosses in today. Ugali. Well, if they're going to add to their 32 Premiership trophies, they're going to have to do something quite remarkable in the next 15 minutes or so. There will be extra time and penalties, of course, if Ugali do equalise. Roche finds Davidson, looks for the back heel return. Shuttleworth was there. They're turning the screw slightly. They are. They're creating more chances, but they're just not quite able to find that breakthrough they need. Walker, we're going to make a change, but I think they've decided to wait until this attack is over. Sears with the throw. In towards the near post, won by Davidson. Crucial interception there because Roddy was loading up on the far post. Allen's just sm smacked that into the Walker City supporters. And we'll go again from the other side. Here comes the change for Walker. See who it is. <laughs> is it Tyler Allen coming off? I think it's Carl. It is Carl Podesky coming, coming on. But who's coming off? Is it Allen? Yep. It is Allen. So Pat Carl Podesky. 15 minutes of the of his career left. He's retiring after today's game. Into the penalty area and the goal kick. So Kolpadeski will no doubt do the role that Matt Mensa was performing so well for 70 minutes. He's got the same kind of ability and again another player who's well known around these parts. It was part of a 2004 Canberra Croatia side or Canberra Deacon as they were then that won the Youth National Championships. Matt Mensa was in that team. Anthony Jagorinic was in that team as well. He was head coach of Balcon United Women's Programme and won a swathe of trophies for them as well. Here's Elijah Brooker looking to slide it through for Smith who was offside. And I think he knew it. He gave himself up there a bit. Launched forward looking for Davidson. It might fall for Roach here. He was interested. Burke got a touch. The bounce is horrible for Moffitt. He's dealt with it rather well, considering. Marco Dupali is screaming at Danny Roach, Roach to press Robert Fry. You may have picked that up because everybody in yellow just stepped away and Robert Fry could have waited for 10 minutes with the ball there. And you don't want to be giving more, the Wagga side too much time wasting if you, you garlic. They'll take every chance they can with the 1-0 lead. And why wouldn't you at this stage? Most of the chances this second half have fallen to the team in yellow. Grant Davidson with perhaps the best. 
Little shove there by Zach Penny. Fairly obvious. Yeah, it wasn't much subtle about it. Well, it's a chance for Bavaresco. He's just going to launch this long again. You would think Davidson again, the obvious target for Roche to pick up the pieces in and around. It's a bit short. Matsui won it. Pandolfo goes square. Here's Rossiti. Bavaresco. Touch from Jacob Donadell. Matoi's there and winning the ball off of Roche and then over hitting his ball through to Ben Smith. Who's quick, but not that quick. Not quite that quick. Depali got a Ugali going forward as quick as they can. That's a wasted ball from Jacob Donadell. And Fry, as you'd imagine, taking up a few more seconds, eking out the time here into the last ten and a half minutes of the MPL2 Grand Final. As the sun beats down on Deakin Stadium, will it be setting on Ugali's challenge for the double and Grand Final glory? Flanagan with a throw, looking for Pitesky. He's got a piece of it and he's staying in play, remarkably enough. Let's see how he would help, will keep that in. An impressive effort on the byline. All the pressure was on Burkray. who doesn't look to be running too freely, Dylan Burkray. Yeah, looking a bit proppy. Touch from Donadell. Mason Donadell back to Jacob Donadell. Roche. Now Isaac Donadell. Nice turn, Roddy. He's rolled his marker. Can he deliver something into the penalty area? He might get a second opportunity here. Goes sliding into the challenge. Screams from both sets of fans. <laughs> one for a penalty, one for a free kick. It looks like it might be a bit of an injury here. Well, Calvin Roddy got a little bit of the man there when he went for the ball. Already on the yellow card, though. Might have rolled his ankle in the in the contest, I think. Ugali only conceded 11 goals this season before today. Wagga City Wanderers conceded 14. The Wanderers options, Daniel Ocheng and Jacob Brooker, both forwards. So that would be a, a real reshuffle for them. I'll be waiting there while the central defenders going down at this late stage in the game. Well, especially with Dylan Burkray looking a little bit ginger alongside him as well. With the speed you Ugali for their disposal though, they won't want to have too many niggles. It's a big pitch here at Deakin Stadium, isn't it? It's quite wide and long and can take it out on you. Take its toll throughout the 90 minutes. What this does mean is that we're going to get a fair bit of injury time. And as I said, Liam, Ugali have been knocking on the door for most of the afternoon, but yet they've not found the key to get in. Yeah, it's just been a bit of a throw a day up forward for them. They just haven't been able to find that final pass they need. Whether the injury to Joe Price has made a big difference, I probably think it has, with his creation in the midfield. Um, and obviously Bajanti going down as well probably hasn't helped either. We said we lost, they lost Priest early doors, but Mason Donadale's come in and done a, a manful job in there. It's been one of the better, better players that they've had this afternoon. But just using the player Priest's ability, and, and we know he can score goals as well, and which he's done in MPL1 here in Canberra for the Rhinos. We're going to have to wait and see whether Sean Moffitt recovers from that. Wonders will play with 10 for the time being, it would seem. It's a brave call. Looks like one of the Brooker boys have dropped in to fill the hole for now. Yeah, Isaac Brooker's into the defensive role. And if Grant Davidson will target him. Massive size difference there. Pandolfo lifted towards Davidson. 
Mason Donadil was there, Shuttleworth just gets a little toe on it, enough to prod it out of play. Six and a half minutes for Wagga, Moffat is getting himself back on, he's not running. He's not looking too, too fresh is he? No. Roche was there and here is Moffat, his first involvement since he's come back on. Isaac Brooker, probably didn't want that ball from Moffat, who sends that up towards Ben Smith who does enough to put Colby Sears off and win his team a throw. Well, this is the end of the park that the Wanderers want to be. Yeah, as far away from goal as possible for him with just over, oh, just under six minutes left, plus injury time. Probably get, what, four or five of that maybe? After that fairly lengthy delay for Moffitt and the usual, usual three plus a couple. And ball the call here. I think all football matches go 93 minutes these days, don't they? Minimum. Seems like it, and Moffat still not looking like he's moving all that freely. Rossiti up towards Davidson, wins the header. Roche is alert to it, comes for Roddy, lifted in. Here's Davidson, real chance for Davidson on the turn. It's brilliant. Grant Davidson steps up, win counted with a stunning strike. And Ugali have saved themselves with five minutes to go. What a goal! Well, any Ugali supporter will say that Davidson's got that in his book and he's once again shown his class in front of goal. He scored a cracker early in the season and he's now scored an absolutely crucial goal for the, the Ugali side. With five minutes remaining. It fairly flew off the right foot and a decision by Luke Santolin to throw the 42 year old up top has paid dividends in a big way. Ugali back on level terms. Daniel Ocheng's coming on for Ben Smith in response for the Wanderers. We might be settling for an extra half hour here, Liam. Well, that's an interesting choice to make given that you've got Moffat nursing a bit of a knock to his ankle. Heading into extra time, an extra 30 minutes, you're, with a central defender that's carrying a bit of a knock, it's a bit of a, a, bit of a dangerous call. A stunning strike of exquisite power from Grant Davidson as Ugali back on terms. Can they go on and win it from here? Mason Donadell. They'll feel they can. Jacob Donadell. There's a sudden lift in the sails of Ugali. Mason Donadell looking on, looking to take on Ocheng. The office link is getting more and more obvious as the minutes wear on. Colby Sears with a throw into the area. Davidson, the target again, wins his team a corner. Now they're pushing for, a, pushing for a win, and Wagga are holding on. Took a bit of magic, didn't it, to break down this Wagga defence. An absolute moment of magic from Davidson. They've gone short here, Mason Donadell, lifted in by Roddy towards the far post. Bavaresco swings it back into the penalty area, Roche wants a piece of it. It's going to break for Elijah Brooker. Challenge is firm and strong by Colby Sears. Donadell, Roddy, and Shuttleworth gets rid of it, and you get a sense now that the momentum has completely swung. That goal has really given the lift to the Ugali boys. Sears into the area. Burkray, who can hardly walk, has nodded it clear. Matsui, Ocheng can't hold it up. Roddy looks for Isaac Donadell, Davidson. With Burkray struggling big style, Moffitt's also limping as well in the back here out of your shot. Both of them can barely walk. I'm not sure how they're going to get through an extra half an hour. Any be dangerous signs for the Wanderers if they don't end it. Elijah Brooker looking to do that. Well, Daniel Ocheng mentioned him earlier in the commentary. He has got thunder in that right foot. If they can get him within range. Time ticking away, two minutes plus stoppage time to go. Are we going to find a winner or will we be here for an extra half hour? Well, Jacob Donadell's gone down in an absolute heap under the challenge from Brooker and he's still down. Here is Elijah Brooker. Not much sympathy from those in Wanderers black and white. Still down off the ball. Roche is off on the run here. Roddy has it. And Donadell is still down. Out of your picture. Not happy having a chat with Damon Van Putten about an incident he felt 
he was caught by Elijah Brooker but it, going back to the goal Liam the finish from Grant Davidson was of a season striker wasn't it I mean it's not a centre back who's gone forward there which he which he was but his third of the season you mentioned the Thunderbolt he scored in round one he got a bit of, a bit of that it was a fair bit of velocity behind it absolute venom in that right forward and he, shown, he was a striker in his early days and got moved back to the central defence so Luke's movement of him up forward has proved an inspired choice yeah the two veterans Matt Mensah and Grant Davidson with the goals poor old Robert Fry didn't even see it I don't think it just flashed past him didn't have an earthly and the thing that Ugali have in their favour is they've really dominated the second half and Wanderers haven't really been able to get a chance on goals so Jacob Donadell will need to leave the fray for a little bit 90 seconds Sorry, it's 30 seconds, I should say, plus stoppage time to go. We're going to get a fair bit of stoppage time, I'd now imagine. What's your guess? I think I just saw the signal of five. Five? You've got good eyes, mate. I'll hold you to that. Here's Isaac Donadell. Rossiti. Is there a winner? Mason Donadell looking to provide it into stoppage time. Mason Donadell swings it to the near post and Fry was there as the five minutes that Liam correctly called eagle-eyed Warren. My 26-year-old eyes are still working for me, Russ, which is a good sign. Yeah, mine are a little bit older than that. I have a birthday on Tuesday <laughs> and they're getting worse. To Pauli, who's barely had a save to make today, to be honest. I wonder if he's really had that one shot on goal that went in, so... Brooker. Very quiet, though, but they're looking dangerous. De Pauli's come to collect. So five minutes of stoppage time to go. It's a tired-looking ball forward. Donadell has it. Roche looks to turn. Davidson. Ball's found its way to Mason Donadell. Davidson around the corner to Donadell on the return. He's got Roche at the near post. He couldn't find him with the cutback. A little bit of a disappointing end to what was a neat little build-up. Now we're looking dangerous there that they had just found that ball into the box. Roche might have been in. Well, I hope you haven't got any plans to get back to Griffith too early tonight, Liam, because it looks like we're going to have another half an hour of this. I think optimistically it was 10 o'clock return time, so I think that's now well and truly gone out the window. We might even go to penalties. There's been some epic penalty shootouts around the world lately. I wonder if we're going to add one to it this afternoon at Deakin Stadium. I think AC Milan had one in the Europa League in the week. It was about 24 shots or something. Yeah. Here's Matoi. Got himself a free kick. The advantage was played briefly. Wanderers still believe, though. And why not? Podeski directing traffic. The veteran looking to go out with a bit of silverware. Shuttleworth been entrusted with the free kick. Podeski is jogging up to join a three-pronged attack. It's lifted towards Ocheng. It's too easy for Ugali. Here's Davidson causing all sorts of problems. Can he release Roche down the channel? He can. Much to do from Roche. He's all on his own at the moment. He's got options with him. He might go alone. Roche into the area. Pulls it back. What a chance. It fizzed across the six-yard box and there was no one there to put it in. Roddy would have only needed to put the slightest bit of shoelace on that and that would have been in the back of the net but he was just a little bit too slow getting to the far post. Here's Roddy. He's found Roche. Can he win it? He can't because Fry denies him. Super save from Robert Fry to keep the Wanderers in the final. First side of goal that Danny Roche has had all afternoon and he's been denied by the Wanderers stopper. But this is the difficulty the Wanderers are going to have now with the two limping centre-backs who are getting less mobile by the minute. They're going to be a fair chance of getting caught out by the speed of Roche. That's lifted forward. Davidson is on here. Fry's coming and Davidson's clattered into him. Davidson's going to score, but the whistle will go for a foul. It did look like there was a coming together, didn't there? And the big fella's denied a double. 50-50 ball between the strike and the keeper always seems to go to keep as well. Every single time. Every single goalkeeper watching is going, that is 100% a foul. Every striker's watching is like, come on. <laughs> He 
you can see, you might see it in your picture there, both Burkray and Moffitt cannot walk. So if they can get Roche, Davidson, Roche or Roddy running at them, there's going to be all sorts of trouble for the Wanderers in extra time. It goes back to that substitution that the Wanderers made when they could have taken one, one of them off and decided to throw on another attacking player, which might not have been the smartest move if they have to go in extra time. Ball swung in. Here is Burkray defending. Fry has it. Well, they'll have a couple of minutes to try and patch them up before extra time. Unless, of course, we have a dramatic conclusion to this one. Mason Donadell, who's looked lively. Jacob Donadell, nice switch of play. Roddy's found a little bit of space here to run at Flanagan to try and take on the teenager. Good ball in. Davidson's peeled off on the far post. Here's Roche. Shooting chance for Roche on the turn. It's deflected and somehow Fry has made an outstanding stop. He was sprawling across the floor and he's clawed it round the post. That is a sensational second effort from the Wanderers keeper. He was down and out for all money and just managed to throw his left hand up and knock it away for a corner. Well, it was a deflection off Moffitt, wasn't it? It looked certain to go in and Fry committed himself and somehow threw up a paw and claws it away to safety. It's like the walking wounded back there at the moment. Fry is struggling a bit himself now. Roddy with the corner. Swings it in towards Davidson who was the target. Came off the head of the centre back. Nathan Shakespeare looking at the watch as Donadell tries to lift it into the area. Pandolfo does so. That one's got snow on it and it's a problem for Fry who does it very well under pressure. And that'll do us a dramatic end to uh -oh. 90 minutes, Liam. And there's Wanderers' bodies all over the place at the back there. It's finished 1-1. We're going to have half an hour of extra time. It's probably fair on the balance. I don't think Moffat's going to be able to get through. Looking at the way he's holding his ankle right now. With Nathan Shakespeare going to check on him. It's going to be tough for him to get through in the next 30 minutes. Can they make another change in extra time? I think they can, can't they? I think there's a fourth substitute allowed in extra time. I know there is by FIFA laws. Now, whether, and whether they're playing those same laws here in MPL 2, we'll find out, I guess. The, the only other option is Jacob Brooker, of course. Uh, the young centre forwards, very physical striker. Maybe you could add a push, chuck him into centre back. But it's been an entertaining game, hasn't it? I mean, it, it, there's not been a huge amount of goal-scoring chances, but what chances there have been um, came mostly in the second half. And uh, Danny Roche, Roche there, nearly finished it off for Ugali. Great chance for a player of his quality. Mm, and the two goals that have been scored have been absolute pearlers from Matt Mensah in the first half, which sort of an outside of the foot chip over. Michael DePoli in the Ugali goal, and then Grant Davidson with an absolute pile driver to draw it on level. And Fry did exceptionally well there twice. The save from Roche, and then the second one when Roche's effort was deflected. I mean, that was an exceptional stop. So we're going to have half an hour of extra time. We might take a break for a couple of minutes, just recharge the batteries, and we'll be back for extra time in the NPL 2 Grand Final because it's finished here. Ugali won, Walker City Wanderers won.
Welcome back to Deakin Stadium for extra time in the NPL2 Grand Final. I'm still Russ Gibbs and you're still Liam Warren. I am. Yeah, we're here for another half an hour. Good job it's a long weekend this weekend. Strap yourself in. Bit of free football for you. Maybe it wasn't a bad thing that this Grand Final got moved from last weekend. Good I work, work tomorrow would have been a bit of a bit of a okay. struggle, wouldn't it? But you can have a bit of a lion and recover from this one. Which team will be celebrating in half an hour? If neither of them are, we go into a penalty shootout. You'd have to say, on balance of play, and on the fact that there's a fair few walking wounded out there, that it might well be Ugali who are favourites at the moment. Do you think so? I think that might, and it looks like. The Wanderers may have made the change they needed to. Yeah, it must be Jacob Brooker. He's the only other substitute available. And it's Moffat that's gone off. So his injury, obviously, a little bit more serious than Dylan Burkray, who was struggling himself, wasn't he? He's got to force himself through half an hour here, too. Well, toss up, friends. Ugali. Staying as is. It'll be a real test of the fitness of both sides but on the warmer day they're playing, in the, playing the 120 minutes. Well for those in black and white at the moment I think it's just going to be a, a test of character and dig in deep and see what they can. They were so close. Five minutes away from glory as it is now. Have a bit of walking wounded out there. They need someone to step up and make themselves a hero. Or will it be those in yellow who carry on their fantastic form from the league season? We'll find out in about half an hour. Don't go anywhere. Go grab a beverage of your choice. Enjoy the sunshine and enjoy another half an hour of football. Ugali getting us underway. Rossiti lifts it forwards. Shuttleworth under pressure straight away here from Mason Donadell. Interesting choice from the right back there to try and flick it back over his own head with Mason Donadell bearing down on him. Jacob Brooker has gone up front. So he'll be the out ball if they can get it to him. Corner for Ugali. Samuel Rossiti is sneaking in on the far post. It's swung in and taken well by Robert Fry, who in the main has defended quite well. He has, and he kept his side in the game late in the Yeah, could do half. nothing about the goal, could he? And kept his team in it with two superb saves in quick succession. Here's Donadell. Davidson. Mason Donadell goes for the return. Two shirts in the middle, tried to find Roche. Pedeski was doing the defensive duties. And the Wanderers know to look after Roche. There was two there marking up on him, looking for that ball in the box. Elijah Brooker swings it over the top. Here's Jacob Brooker. It might sit up for him. Collides with the goalkeeper. There's a decision to be made here. And the decision is play on. It's a close one. It was. Bit of a gamble there from Napoli to take on the physical contact rather than getting the ball, but got away with it. Flanagan up to Burkray who's being deployed as a striker here I think because he can barely move. Seems like a smart move. Get him up front, use him to hold the ball up as much as he can. Which means there's a real shuffle in the team isn't it? A completely different central defensive combination going into extra time is probably not what the Wanderers would have wanted. To so the least. Shuttleworth seems to have come in side with Isaac Brooker. Is that it centre back? Maybe they've gone three at the back. Looks like they might have. Needs must. Now I've got three Brookers on the park and three Donadells. Three Donadells. There's a family affair out there. Absolutely is. Here's a Pedeski. Jacob Brooker. He's part of the under 23 squad that won their grand final on penalties. Mason Donadell. Is Matoi. Jacob Brooker. 
One thing there is out there, Liam, is a lot of attacking talent on both teams. There now. is. There really is. We've thrown a ton of strikers on. Free kick to Wugger. Seemed a little harsh on Isaac Donadell there. He seemed to just fall over after the tackle from Jacob Brooker, but free kick's gone Brooker's way. Matoi to take. Swung in by Matawi and Michael DePauli collects. Mentioned his overhead kick in the 89th minute. I wonder if he'll come up for a corner if they need one. <laughs> That'd be something, wouldn't it? I think he'll give his coach a heart attack if he does that. <laughs> Roddy swings it in towards Davidson. It might come for Davidson here. It was a good touch, in fact, by Shuttleworth. It needed to be. Crucial intervention to stop Davidson from getting in behind. Pinning who's now playing right back, or right midfield, or a combination thereof. Jacob Donadell, Calvin Roddy. Bavaresco's made the run in behind Elijah Brooker, who's been deployed as an auxiliary left back in this Wagga City Wanderers reshuffle. Isaac Donadell. Roddy, Shuffleworth away. Might be backs to the wall time for the Wanderers for much of this extra time and just try and hit them on the break. Yeah, it's been much of that for the whole game, really. Especially in the second half, you goal, were dominating and just not able to find the, the goal they needed until right at death. Oh Cheng. First time we've seen him as an attacking threat. Probably turns it over. Here's Isaac Donadell's touch. Roche on the turn. It's a bit of heat on that ball and too much for Calvin Roddy. So it's difficult in extra time to lift yourself again after you've conceded so late as well. Especially to find that energy level on a warm day like this. It's in sapping conditions. And another half an hour for all these boys out there. You guys, you've got a couple of subs up their sleeve, though, if they need to use them. Dominic Galuzzo and Luke Santalim himself could come on. Brooker flicks it forward to Elijah Brooker. Throw in to the Wanderers. Logan Flanagan, who's been exceptional on his first start. Looking for some movement ahead of him, there wasn't much. Roche knocks it away, Davidson on his own, up against Isaac Brooker, who beats him to it, and then steps away. Isaac Brooker looks to find Podeski. He's done no, he's bisected both of them in fact and Roddy has found Roche with a bit of space he's got a runner outside him it's Mason Donadell Grant Davidson is in acres of space unmarked in the middle but William Shuttleworth saw it and concedes a corner I'd be interested to see the corner count for the Ugali boys today they've had a fair few haven't had the opportunity to make one count yet 11 corners for the Ugali boys and this is the 11th can they make this one count Swung into the near post, flicked on by Davidson. Might cover Donadell. Will come for Roddy briefly and didn't catch it. Bavaresco finds Roddy. Rossiti goes for the long crossfield ball. Pinney got it under control. Ocheng. Pinney. Good. Pressure from Mason Donadell again. Great, plenty of noise from the Ugali supporters. Who will blink first? We await and see. Stalemate at the moment. Matawi. Anna Matawi. Been busy in the middle of the park is Ocheng. Ugali, you want to be careful with 
He's got a thunderous shot. He's going here, Ocheng, all the way through. Couldn't quite get any purchase on the finish. He scuffed his shot a little bit there, which would be a bit disappointing for him. It opened up briefly, didn't it? There's a warning for Ugali if they needed one. Shuttleworth. Pedeski. Burkray. He's brought down by Isaac Donadales. Wanted to see him a free kick. Did well there. The centre back turns centre forwards. Six and a half minutes to go in the first period of extra time. Nathan Shakespeare wants a bit of a chat with Isaac Donadell. Last thing he wants to do is get himself in the sim bin. I think that's the final warning. Yeah, the naughty chair is empty at the moment, but they want it to stay that way. Thankfully, it has been all day. Isaac well, Brooker's free kick is cleared as far as Roddy, who helps it on his way straight away. Now, Roche has half of Deacon Stadium to run into here on his own. His first touch was a bit heavy. He's going to get a second opportunity. Brings Roddy into play. Davidson the only option in there. And that is some heroic defending on two occasions from Isaac Brooker. A great job to originally close down Roche and then even better to stop the cross from Calvin Roddy. Roddy again. Space in the middle of the park here by Isaac Donadell. It's almost being played at walking pace at the moment. Carl Podeski. Burke Ray is Elijah Brooker. Looks for Jacob Brooker. And he in turn finds Ocheng. Four shirts up in this attack. If Ocheng can pick one of them out, Brooker is the target in the middle. It might come towards Podeski. It's over everybody. Elijah Brooker has a chance to lift it into the box again. Jacob Brooker's peeled away from his marker. Rossiti up in the air. Donadell away. Podeski. And volley clear in the end. And here's Roche, and he's got the yard on Isaac Brooker here. Roche bearing down on goal. Is this his moment? Roche is through, and he can't. Directed on target. What he has done is left a boot in a rather sore area for Robert Fry. I don't think there was anything malicious in it. It was just sort of the last dish attempt to try and knock the ball away from the keeper. Brave goalkeeping to throw himself at the foot there for Fry, and Isaac Brooker did just enough to put Danny Roche off. Yeah, <coughs> it looked like Russia was away for all money. Just, just enough pressure on his back shoulder to sort of stop him from getting away. Well, Michael Babbage needs an injury to his goalkeeper right now. <laughs> About as much as he needs a hole in the head, really, doesn't he? He does not need this. It would not be ideal, given they've got no subs left on the bench. I wonder if he goes to penalties, whether they're going to have a uh, five fit players to be able to take one. It's becoming a bit of a war of attrition for the, for the Wanderers boys, unfortunately. But they showed a brief passage up there at the other end where um, Daniel Ocheng showed us just why he was top scorer in the under-23s. Quick feet, couldn't quite get the shot away. Just sort of scuffed the shot at the last minute to when he was looking for that bit of power but <laughs> couldn't quite uh, get anything behind it to get it past the polar. Saw one for Robert Fry, I think it must have been a knee. I think it was knee on knee, yeah. For a moment I thought it was a bit higher than that. By the way, it's a sore one for Robert Fry. But he did what he had to do. He's put his body on the line, which many of these Wanderers players have done. Calvin Roddy stretching out just out of shot as well. There's players sat down in the penalty area trying to stretch themselves out too. Fitness is starting to take its toll, I think, Russ. Yeah, I know Matawi sat down there in the box. and It's like William Shuttleworth having a bit of a rest as well. Trying to stretch his legs out. It's been a long and tiring afternoon, and bearing in mind, most of these guys have had to make the journey today as well. Three and a half, four hours each. It's uh, going to be a long trip home for both of these sides, and a few stops along the way, I think, to stretch it out. If it goes to penalties, I might not get home until after midnight. Be a late one for you. Not the first one, it probably won't be the last. But it's great for these clubs to be here at Deakin, isn't it? They both have expressed a desire to come here and play at this fantastic venue. Um, gives it a real feel of occasion. It's a great showing of the strength of the football in the Riverina, really, to have two, the two sides from the Riverina fighting it out for the MPL 2 Championship. It's great. And it's such a shame that the, the capacity is limited as well because I do feel that we've had a fair more travelling support 
Um, we understand why the capacity is limited, of course, but I think there would have been a lot more people watching this. But if you are a Ugali or Wagga City Wanderers supporter and you're watching us on Bar TV, we thank you for tuning in. Hope you're enjoying the coverage. We love to read your comments. We're into the final couple of minutes of the first half of extra time. Colby Sears smacks that into the sky. Could have asked for a better day for it. No, definitely a vast improvement to last weekend's weather you had to deal with, Ross. A little breeze as well, which is taking the edge off the uh, 26 degrees heat. Hopefully it's getting down to the pitch level. Doesn't seem to be though, does it? Because it seems quite calm if quite you look still. at the flags. Mm. We're quite high up here, aren't we? Not quite as high up as we have been at some other venues. Here's Jacob Brooker looking to put Ocheng in behind and he might have a run on here for De Pauli, but De Pauli just sees it out of play. Using all of his experience to eat up a few seconds, it looks like we might get a couple of minutes of time added on at the end of this first half of stoppage time, but status quo seems to be the way it was. And we're 15 minutes away from the dreaded spot kicks. Well, Wagga came out on top in the under-23s on the spot kicks, 5-4 after six apiece. There'll be some plenty of players that might put their hand up, but there's also plenty of players that might not feel it. Might not even need to get to that far. Here's Mason Donadell. Will we get a winner? Roche. A lot of space for Roddy if he can find him. Went to Donadell short. It might fall for Roche here. Good challenge by Isaac Brooker. The fourth official has indicated that there'll be a minimum of three minutes of time added on. Well, you might be able to hear that. Three minutes at the end of the first quarter, uh, first half of stoppage of extra time, I should say. Pedeski. Elijah Brooker. Nudged over, gets the free kick. Carl Pedeski taking control of the situation. He's got Brooker and Burkray on Ocheng on the edge of the box. Lifted in towards Burkray. It's a bit short for him though. Matawi. Pedeski's flick. Bavaresco. He's off and running here. Bavaresco. He's got Roche in the middle and that's where he's aimed it. It was just too far ahead of Roche and the on-rushing Mason Donadell and Robert Fry. Thankfully he looks fully recovered. Well, not fully, but mostly. I wonder if it might have been the knock to the leg that he's already got strapping on as well. And kick out enough of for it to get rid of it. Here's Ocheng. Chance for him to get the return pass. Pandolfo was there. And that's a good ball over the top to Mason Donadell. If he keeps this in, Ugali will be interested. Roddy in the middle, Roche in the middle, Mason Donadell arriving, uh, sorry, Isaac Donadell arriving, but the delivery from Mason Donadell wasn't good enough. Story of their afternoon for Ugali, got into wide positions on numerous occasions, haven't been able to make them count. It's just that final ball that's let them down on numerous occasions today, which has been unfortunate. Well, Robert Fry is obviously injured enough that he can't take the goal kicks. Isaac Brooker given the responsibility. Van Cheng, Jacob Brooker, has bounced off for a seat, he's off of Brooker. Bavaresco away, now Roddy's got a bit of space here as well, if he can bring this under control. Can he pick out a yellow shirt in the middle? He can't, because he can't get past Isaac Brooker, who has been outstanding today. And he's filled in two well roles. Filled in well as the makeshift centre-back for this extra time period. Goes to show you don't have to be the tallest to play centre-back, do you? If your reading of the game's good and you're quick across the ground, it's all about your dedication. We need to see it out, at least till the half. Roddy swings it into the area. Shuttleworth, who's also defended well, gets rid of it. Ocheng. Pity, couldn't keep it in play. I 
as you'd expect the tempo of the game slightly gone off off a little bit that's to be expected as you approach the end of the first half of extra time and there goes the whistle so half time in extra time there's no difference to the score and it's been a a, a pretty even half, to be honest. There was there wasn't much in it, was there? There wasn't any real opportunities. Um, there was one for Roche that Fry came out to deny. Couldn't get it. Couldn't get his shot on target. But where's your gut for, like, lying at the moment, Liam? Are we going to get a winner? Or are we going to get a penalties? Going off that performance, I reckon we're probably heading the spot kicks. And then it's anybody's game, isn't it? Really. I mean, both good goalkeepers. If it gets that far, um, the question is whether or not who who's going to be on there to take them and who's going to be, you know, have the have the you know the the confidence to get get up there and take a spot kick because on a grand final day it's different isn't it, it, it everything's on the line and you know that kick can live with you for a, well, I have to live with you for until next season especially when the Wanderers have got a couple of tired legs from the under 23s game that also went to penalties so and those boys are out there now so whether or not that's also wearing them down a bit well they're gutsing it out both these sides at the moment so as we said long trip here and then 105 minutes of football 15 mil minutes to go we might find ourselves in a penalty shootout situation. And as much as uh, the lottery of spot kicks is exactly that, it does bring a little bit of drama, doesn't it? It does add to the, the theatrics of it all, especially when it's a derby game as well. Anything better to kick off a, a rivalry that's only in its infancy than the grand final penalty shootout? Can't think of much better. It has been, it's been a decent match to watch, and I hope you've been enjoying it at home. We've had all the action here on Bar TV Sports throughout the year. NPL 1, NPLW, and now NPL 2. NPL 23s as well. You would probably caught the NPL 23 grand final earlier this morning. And I understand loads of people tune in and over their breakfast and watch the early morning kickoffs as well. And from overseas as well. So if you're watching from overseas, hope you're enjoying it too. About to get back underway. Both sides getting a good ovation from their supporters that are still in the grounds. Some of them huddled up in the shade, trying to get out of the sun. Probably a smart move. It's late in the afternoon. The sun still has got a bit of bite to it. Yeah, it sets behind us here at Deakin Stadium, which makes it a little bit difficult for the end that Michael De Pauli is actually defending. You can get... I've seen goals go in here, shots from where we are in the behind with the sun behind us in that goal. It can make it really difficult for the goalkeeper at that end. So whether that will come into play, we'll see. Ready to go. 15 minutes between all of us and a penalty shootout. <laughs> We're going to have a restart because Elijah Brook had stolen about 15, 20 metres there. Yeah, you're not going to get away with that one. Usain Bolt wouldn't have got there that quick. So already we're going to get 20 seconds at least to stop his time on the 15 minutes. What's happened here? Uh, we're getting the free kick for the offside for the full start. By the look of it. Is that the law now? I thought we just started again. Oh well. <laughs> well looks like what Nathan Shakespeare's gone with. He's gone with a free kick. But it can't, surely it can't be in I, the... I would have uh, thought well, it would have had to been taken from halfway. But you would think you so. Know. The ball swung in towards Davidson. Fry's missed it. Challenge is here. He's going to fall for Donadell. He's taking on Pinney. And he sat him down. Can he deliver something? Donadell is deflected. It might come for Roddy. Here is Roddy with a shot over the crossbar. I'll tell you what, that might have been quite controversial had he gone in. Yeah, he just lifted his head at the ball at the moment then. Glad the ball get a bit too far out in front of him. But it was great work from Mason Donadell on the ball line to get that ball back in. I've never seen that before. I always thought there was if you went too early, it was a free you just restarted. First time for everything, I guess, Russ. Maybe they've changed the laws on us again. Wouldn't be the first time. <laughs> Certainly wouldn't. Has anyone actually worked out what the handball is yet, or are we still just We're flying still just, just flying by the seat of our pants. We don't have a, a VAR here, so if there is one, we'll just be relying on people at home <laughs> to let us know. Let's hope we don't get a controversial decision to end this one. Elijah Brooker looking to find a bit of space that didn't exist. Yigali with the throw. Roddy. Pedeski won the challenge. Is Burkray? Pedeski. Rossiti with the sliding clearance for Ugali. Now Roddy found himself a pocket of space and he's found a ball for Davidson who's gone a slightly too early and is flagged offside. The interesting thing for the Ugali side is they've still got the two substitutes up their hand as well that they could use in the 
Last 12 minutes of extra time as well. Well, I think the chance of Luke Santlin coming on are pretty slim. He did say to me beforehand well, it would be unlikely, but you can take a penalty. He has got his shin pads on, so let's not Yeah, so maybe, maybe he will bring himself on if he does go to a shootout. I mean, it, calm head. He, had, he did miss a penalty in the under-23s earlier in the year, so maybe not. <laughs> maybe he doesn't fancy himself. Pass the responsibility to the youngsters. Shout out though to Grant Davidson and, and Dylan Burkray, both playing as matching centre forwards, and they've done really well. They've done quite well moving into the target man up forward. That's where the ball's gone towards Burkray. Podeski has it in midfield. Tries to find Flanagan. Left him a bit short, and Roddy's beaten him to it. Isaac Brooker. One at the back. Comfortably enough by Rossiti. Wagger looking to find a way through to restore the lead that they had in the 20th minute. Burkray, massive shouts of handball from half of Deakin Stadium. It did look like it brushed his hand, but maybe it was in a natural position. <laughs> Podeski finds Matawi, who's off on a run. He's still going here into the penalty area. He's still going as well, and denied by Michael De Pauli, who came off his line very quickly to thwart that attack. That could have been potentially controversial as well for us. Well, that. we might have been asking for that VAR. <laughs> the upshot is a throw, which Zach Pinney will take. Can he find a Wanderer shirt? Burkray come off his shins. A snap back and win it of Jacob Donadell, who sent it long, and that flick on has asked Robert Fry to come out of goal. He's done so. Oh. He's only found Roddy, though, and he's off his line here. Will Roddy take it on? Calvin Roddy shifting through the gears. Roche to his left. Roddy swings it across. Davidson was the target. Shuttleworth defends. Thought Roddy might have tried his luck from range there. Yeah, I'm surprised he didn't just try the lob because the keeper was a fair way out. Mason, Isaac Donnell wins it back. Battles with Pedeski in a free kick is Ugalis. A bit of shirt fronting going on over there. Well, Carl Podeski's last game, he's not going to go out quietly, is he? No, you're not exactly going to get a teenager in the back down. Well, stay with us. Ten minutes plus stoppage time before we go to penalties. Can Ugali make the breakthrough off this free kick? They've committed a few into the attack. They've only left three back. And delivery is short. Roche was the target. He's brought it down nicely here, Roche, and he's got his shot away, and Fry beats it to safety. And Pideski at the second attempt clears. That was a delightful turn by Roche to get himself facing towards goal, and a good save by Fry to prevent the, prevent the shot getting in at the near post. Cramp for Brooker as well. Elijah Brooker. You probably almost count the amount of Wanderers that are fully fit on the field on the single hand there. Yeah? yeah, there's not many, is there? But they're manfully digging in. They're doing their bits. Here's Roddy. We're going to swing in the area. Flanagan, who is still full of running. Throw is long. That's how he headed it into the air to himself. Pedeski gets it up towards Jacob Brooker. Can he keep it in? He can't. Time ticking away. Ugali finishing strong. As I say that, Isaac Donnell miscontrols it, the much to the delight. Almost <laughs> much to the delight of the Wagga City fans. It's been a rivalry and there's not really there's not an edge to it though, has it? It's been a kind of friendly rivalry. It's been played in the right spirit and, it, and it's really good to see. Two sides that have really gone for this. That's what you want, you don't want things getting nasty in the grand final. Well, last weekend there was a send-off in the uh, Wagga City game, wasn't there, against Queenbeyan. There was two send-offs and there was uh, four in the semi-final between White Eagles and New Gali. Yeah, White Eagles ended up with about three players sent off in about five minutes, I think, from memory. Luke Stevens was sent off, of course, for Wagga and Samuel Scarfoni got his marching orders for New Gali, which is why he's not here today. Playing anyway. Eight minutes plus stoppage time left to go. 
in the NPL2 grand final, which is going the distance. Pedeski nods it away. Jacob Donadell up to Davidson. Tried to find Roche, but they weren't on the same wavelength. And Pedeski can bring it away to Elijah Brooker. Pedeski up towards Burkray. His little nod down behind Bavaresco is for Brooker, who's got it. He's got Jacob Brooker ahead of him here, and Elijah Brooker's got down off the ball. The covering defence was from Luke Pandolfo. Just for a minute, it opens up for the Wanderers. Now they left themselves exposed. Mason Donadell looks for Roche. Brooker, lovely header to find Pedeski. The weight on it, perfect. Matawi. Luke Santolin, I can hear from here, asking his team to get it on the floor. Play it on the ground. Bavresco to Roddy. They struck late to equalise. Can they strike late to win it? Davidson with a header. Only finds Flanagan. Jacob Brooker in the battle with Samuel Rossiti. Rossiti comes out on top. There's a little bit of afters and there's a little bit more than some afters. And there's the commentator's curse I was talking about. Yeah, there's the fire. A bit tetchy in this final couple of minutes. It's hadn't exactly been boiling over, but there's going to be some cards coming out here. You can't really be surprised by that because there's a bit of a grapple going on on the floor. Rossiti obviously gets a yellow. And is that the only one? It would seem that way. Are you surprised by that? A little bit because it seemed like the wrestle was sort of initiated by the Wanderers player, but I guess the retaliators always seem to get caught. So yeah. Jacob Brooker maybe got away with one there. Because the free kick goes away of Ugali. But the Ugali player was booked. Work that one out. <laughs> it can only be for the retaliation, as you said, but the free kick originally given to Ugali, and that decision sticks. And Rossiti will launch it towards Roche, who does well to bring it down, and finds Roddy, who swings it into the penalty area. Cleared by Flanagan, touched by Burkray to, to Brooker, Pedeski under pressure. Here's Roddy. Five minutes to go. Davidson lays it off. Roach was there again. Brooker denies him once more. How many times have we said that this afternoon? Donadell battling to find Roddy. Swings it in towards Davidson arriving. Couldn't get a touch. And the whistle goes for offside anyway. The flag was up and Davidson now can join the cramp club. Needs a stretch out. And while they're stretching him out, Wanderers have got on with it. Matawi. Burkray. Pinney. His turn to launch one forward. It's not a bad ball actually. It's found Brooker in behind. Can he get away from his marker? And the challenge comes in and it's a penalty! to Wagga City Wanderers. Nathan Shakespeare had no doubt. And with four and a half minutes to play, it's a spot kick. Late drama once again. Probably a risky tackle to make in that sort of situation from Bavresco to dive in like that. And it didn't look like he got too much of the ball, so it's probably a fair call. What a moment for Wagga City Wanderers. Who is going to be entrusted with responsibility? There's a discussion going on. It might be young Isaac Brooker. Who's been sent forward to place it on the spot. A pivotal moment in the contest. Three and a half minutes left of this one. Wagga City Wanderers presented with a glorious chance to get one hand on the trophy. It's Isaac Brooker against Michael De Pauli. It's a test of character. It's a test of nerves. It's a test of steel. It's Brooker. And he puts it in. And the Wanderers are back in front. Isaac Brooker from the spot. And the underdogs are three minutes away from grand final glory. I'm going to want to be careful here. During the opposition. Goal for Wag 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 Celebrating in front of the Ugali fans. 
Isaac Brooker from the penalty spot in the 117th minute. There will be some conjecture about the decision, of course. There always is. Was there a bit of ball? Was it the right call? Nathan Shakespeare had no doubt. It didn't take him long to make up his decision, which makes me think that... It's lifted in towards Davidson. Fry comes and collects for Wanderers. They've got two and a half minutes to hang on. Their brave team, who have limped and battled their way through this one. Minimal chances. But they're on top. Have you, Garley, got that championship material still in them? Donadell tries to send it through. It's come off Burkray. Rossiti goes long for Roddy. Flanagan was there. Gets a foot in. Roddy has it. Plays a bit of juggling. And Brooker, Elijah Brooker, just smashes it up the park. Anywhere will do for him. Pandolfo's under pressure here. Needs to get this right because Ocheng is lurking. And he does get it right. Here they come with Colby Sears. 90 seconds. Donadell launches it towards Davidson. He's rescued them once. Can he do it again? Davidson into the penalty. Yeah, Roche was lurking. He almost got a touch on it. Good defending from Brooker. Bavaresco can't keep it in play. Important touch. Because it was a lovely cross. I think the Wanderers might just be able to hold out now. The Gali boys are looking a bit tired. They battled the whole way to get here. As we said, they saved themselves late in the 90 minutes. Can they do so again and send us to penalties? We got a minute plus stoppage time. Bavaresco up towards Davidson. He drew three players with him. Couldn't get a touch though. Donadell was there. It came off Pedeski. Donadell goes for the ambitious efforts. And that's well away from goal, much to the glee of the Wagga City Wanderers support. I don't think that'll go down well with his teammates. A very ambitious shot to take when you're up against it. Both teams sucking in the big ones. Nathan Shakespeare wants them to get on with it. Isaac Brooker. Nerves to steal from the youngster from the spot. Lovely penalty. Distance will be what he's after. Here's Donadell. He's found Isaac Donadell. Can he find a piece of magic? Roddy. We're to stoppage time. And only two minutes between Wanderers and Victory. Roddy goes down, free kick. Here comes De Pauli. We mentioned his 89 minute, 89th minute overhead kick. They've not waited for him. They've gone short. Now they've left him at, in no man's land. Here's Roddy firing across the six yard box. It's back to Roddy again. Fires it in again. Another corner. Yeah. And now De Pauli will get to come forward. Stretching out the cramp in the penalty area as well. Everyone in a yellow shirt is up there, with the exception of Jacob Donadell and Jordan Bavaresco. And I think Bavaresco is going to join the party. De Pauli's in there, everyone's in there. About a minute to go. Roddy. Swings it in towards Davidson, who got up with a header. It's bouncing around. There's a big appeal for handball. It's come for Roach. It might come for Davidson again. De Pauli wants a piece. It's away to Ocheng. There's no one at home in the Wanderers' goal. And Ocheng is brought down by Mason Donadell, who's probably going to get a card for that. Real drama. If he didn't do that, all hopes were gone, sir. So. It was the last year's effort that needed to be made. Yeah, took one for the team, didn't he? And needed to. We are at the mercy now of Nathan Shakespeare and however long he deems is necessary. Mason Donazel in the book. The fourth from Ugali to see yellow this afternoon. But that's almost immaterial. Wagga City will have this free kick and Ugali will probably need to go 100 metres if they're even going to get the chance to. Will they have the time? Brooker lifted into the corner. Unsurprisingly, it's going to go all the way out of play for a goal kick and it's been booted out the ground there. That's a booking for Young Brooker. 
Elijah Brooker. That one's in the car park. And now Michael De Pauli is going to have to send this and send it a long, long way. The Ugali, who won the league, have got seconds to save their season, to force a penalty shootout. Pedeski has it. Is there one more chance to come for Ugali? Thumped forward by Sears. It should be easy that for Fry, who takes his time, and Davidson will put him under pressure. Nathan Shakespeare has a glance at the watch. Robert Fry has the ball in his hands and will send it as far away from his goal as is humanly possible. Roddy's challenge. He's kept it in play. No free kick. He's looked for Davidson. Breaks into midfield for Donadell. Shuttleworth with a thumping clearance, which Ocheng will chase. And Ocheng's going to get on the end of this. All on his own. He's gone for the chip. And it wasn't too far away. Wasted a few seconds. It did. And I can't imagine there's too long left now. Time is not the friend of Ugali Soccer Club. Is there one final, final chance? Lifted forward, Fry's cam, good header. It's fallen for Roddy. He's tried manfully to get his team back into it. His Donadell swings it in, it's dipping, and it's in! Oh, oh my goodness me! A remarkable goal! From Isaac Donadell from out wide. It's a disaster for Wagga City Wanderers. It's the last kick of the match. We are going to penalties. I, that's, that sums up the game, really. A goal from nothing. Just Where did that come from? Isaac Donadell from out on the touchline has lofted it goalwards. Fry couldn't get off the ground. It is dipped in the net. Ugali have saved themselves. Wagga City hearts are broken. We are going to a penalty shootout. How much more drama can we possibly have? Uh, literally, with the last kick of the game, a scross has managed to find its way into the back of the net. And we're now going to penalties. What well, a sensational final we've got here, Russ. We asked for much for the Riverina derby. It has produced, hasn't it? But you have to feel for Wagga City. They were this close. Ugali saved themselves late twice. And we're going to a shootout. Who, who's your pick now? I mean, <laughs> it really is luck of the draw now with the spot kicks. Incredible ending to an incredible match. It almost apologetically dropped in the net, didn't it? It just literally fell over the head. I, I don't know if Fry didn't see it or whether it was just the angle of it was just. I don't think he expected it to dip as much as it did. It just seemed to drop at the last minute on him. Almost grazed the underside of the crossbar as it made its way into the net. But Isaac Donadell, his third goal of the season. The man who was wearing the same shirt as his father, Sante, wore for Ugali, has come up with something rather special. Or lucky. Or both. We'll go with both. <laughs> depending on your point of view, I guess. Well, from a neutral, it couldn't be much better. For Wagga City Wanderers... Well, they're looking at it going, we've had this one twice, and it's been taken away from us. Have they got the character to step up, or will Ugali have enough? The unfortunate thing now, I guess, Liam, is that someone's going to be the full guy. It is, and unfortunately for Wagga, their penalty shot hero from the semi-final, Matt Mensah, went off in the 70th minute. How helpful he might have been at this stage of the game. Well, no doubt he may have stepped up for the one that young Isaac Brooker buried with much aplomb earlier on. But we will see. If you stuck with us to the very end, well, you've been rewarded. Some finish. Who's your money on? I'll put my heart on my sleeve and go with your garlic. Bit of bias in there, but... A little bit. I can see you were, you were, you were gutted when the penalty went to him. <laughs> and I was speechless when... The Ugali the girl, the girl, the girl. But, I mean, with fair reason to be speechless with a shot like that. It was unexpected, wasn't it? Uh, massively unexpected. So, anyway, we are ready...
for the penalty shootout, which will take place to the goal to our left. The goal that Isaac Donadell has just dropped his shot in. And we will wait and see who comes up trumps. Will it be Ugali Soccer Club? Will it be Wagga City Wanderers? They've treated us to an epic final. It's been outstanding to watch from a neutral point of view. And what a way to end the season on Bar TV Sports here in Canberra, in the national capital, with an NPL2 grand final penalty shootout. Not much more you could ask for from the from grand final, really. And it looks like Calvin Roddy will be stepping up to take the first shot. Yeah, Roddy first off the mark. I fancy him to score with no keeper. You never know. <laughs> Marco De Pauli getting his gloves on. Robert Fry may have just gone for a bathroom break like Eric Dyer. At least he waited to the break in the game rather than right in the middle. Well, I mean, a bit, a bit hard. I mean, imagine a goal he went for a run. <laughs> but here we go then. Stay with us. Calvin Roddy with kick number one for Ugali. Four times he scored this season. Scored just before the break in the 3-1 win at the Solomad Stadium back on the 6th of September in the game that Ugali won 3-1. He's been busy all afternoon. Has he got nerves of steel from the penalty spot? Robert Fry, who's made some sensational saves to keep his team in it, is in between sticks for Wagga City. So here we go. The penalty shootout underway. Calvin Roddy for Ugali. Strikes it straight down the middle. Never looked like missing. Thumping strike. One from one, that's what you want to start with. Put the pressure right back on the Wanderers. It's the substitutes, Daniel Ocheng. We're making the long strike forward. I mentioned before that he had thunder in his boots when I saw him in the under 23s. He can half hit a ball, this boy. Will he go for power? Will he go for placement? It's Ocheng for the Wanderers. Their first spot kick of the shootout. De Pauli trying to make himself big. Here comes Ocheng. Oh, and he's beautifully tucked it away. Sensational spot kick. Sent De Pauli the wrong way and per pla perfectly placed it into the top corner. Never looked like missing, did he? No. Isaac Donadell, whose goal brought us to this stage. It's his turn from the spot. He just scored from 30 metres. <laughs> It'd be much easier to score from 12 yards out, you would have thought. You'd think so. A bit more pressure on this one, though. I don't know. The last minute equaliser is pretty pressured situation, Russ. But only he'll know whether he spotted Fry off his line earlier on for that cross. Here is Donadell from the spot, and he slides it home. Sends the keeper the wrong way. And it's 2-1 to you, Gali. And Dylan Burkray is stepping up. The man who couldn't walk at the start of extra time, stepping up to the spot. Well, he's only got to take a couple of steps, you'd think. He battled through that extra time period, didn't he? They lost Sean Moffitt and Burkray had to go up front. And he's seen himself through. Last kick of the season for him, so unless we go round again. Burkray for the Wanderers. Can he keep his nerve? Oh, it's saved by De Pauli. He went the wrong way, but came back to stop it. Great. Super agile, keep goalkeeping, and you guardy have the advantage. Great show of agility from you know, Michael De Pauli in goal. To be going one way, stop himself and magically contort himself to save it from the other way. It is Jacob Donadell stepping up for you guardy to give him the advantage. Making his way up to the spot. Jacob Donadell, his fifth consecutive grand final in five years of first grade. Hasn't scored yet this season, Jacob Donadell, been entrusted with this penalty. Oh, and he's missed it. Brilliant save from Fry, diving low to his left. It's back on. Zach Pinney, another substitute. Great stop that, Liam. It was. Did well to get down to his, down to his right side there to stop that shot. 
Not sure Jacob Donahue did an awful lot wrong with that penalty. It just could have been a bit further to the left, but it's a super save. Struck it really well. And just a great save by, by Fry once again. Zach Penny with a third spot kick for the Wanderers, hoping to bring them level. As the nerves jangle. The Academy product for the Wanderers. Cool as you like. Into the top corner, two apiece. Back on terms. And um, Luke Pandolfo stepping up for the next one for you, Gali. Another player who's won six premierships. He's been there, done it, seen it all, got the medals to prove it. Luke Pandolfo from the spot for Ugali. Can Fry repeat this heroics? Can Pandolfo find the net? He's put it over the crossbar. He can't find the target. That puts the pressure right back on the Napoleon goal now. Anno Matawi, the midfielder, the under-18 captain from last season, who's doing his HSC at the moment. I wonder what's more stressful, stepping up to take a spot kick or doing your HSC? Right about now, I think this is probably a bit more probably stressful for him. He's had a great game. He's got a chance to put his side ahead in the shootout for the first time. De Pauli has already made one save. Can he save his team again? The youngster, the midfielder, it's Matawi. Up he steps. Oh, and it's saved by De Pauli. He went the right way. He guessed correctly. And it stays at two apiece. It could be in for a marathon shootout here, Russ, if this continues. Well, it's the third Donadell. No. Danny Roach. Oh, it's not. Sorry, my apologies. It is Danny Roach. Making the step forward. The top scorer. Taking what could be the crucial fifth penalty. You generally put your house on your centre forward. But we've seen some strange things happen today here at Deakin Stadium. Danny Roach for Ugali to give them the advantage again. Fry making himself tall. Roche from the spot. Brilliantly done. Calmly slides it in the corner as you would expect. Drills it home. And Ugali a 5-4-3-2 uh, up. Is it Isaac Brooker? It is Isaac Brooker. Who scored the penalty that put Wanderers ahead. That the Wanderers thought maybe have given them the grand final. He must score. If he doesn't, it's Ugali's. His penalty in extra time was clinical. He's been asked to do it again. Can he save his team and keep them in the shootout in the MPL2 final? Up comes Brooker. Of course he can. Calm, cool, collected. 3-3. Three, three. Placed it well into the bottom right-hand corner. Kicker number six. And Grant Davidson. The big fella whose goal took the game to extra time. He thrashed that home. He did. He'll be looking to do it again. Fair amount of power in his shots, Grant Davidson. His equaliser in the 85th minute was his third goal of the season. Tasked with responsibility from the spot to put his side ahead again. It's Davidson. Oh, and he's fairly cracked that into the roof of the net. Took the risk going high, but it paid off. Super hit. 4-3. That's the veteran stepping up. It's Carl Podeski in his final match. In a storied career. A career which has brought him plenty of honours. He would love to go out on a high. He's had some great memories at Deakin Stadium. Carl Podeski down the years. Can he make another one here? Or will Marco De Paoli make himself the hero? It's Pedeski from the spot. And he just rolls it in the net. He's done well. Kept his composure. Just goes to show you don't need to smash it to find your way in. Four apiece. And Colby C is stepping up for you, Gali. Young 17-year-old. 
who has been in terrific form all afternoon. He has been superb today, Colby Sears. Tasked with the responsibility. Huge pressure on the youngster. Colby Sears against Robert Fry. Can Sears score? Oh, he can't. He's put it up and over the crossbar. And it's a chance for Jacob Brooker to win it for Wagger. Poor Colby Sears. That's harsh on the youngster. It is. And now the irony of it being a Griffith base player stepping up to take the penalty that could decide the game for the Wagger side. Well, Jacob Brooker has already been part of a successful penalty shootout today for Wagga City under-23s when they beat ANU 5-4. If he scores this, Wagga City will be winning 5-4 again. And they will be the MPL2 champions. A chance to win it for the underdogs. Jacob Brooker, one kick away from Wagga City Wanderers' glory. It's Brooker, and he does it! The Wanderers claim the MPL2 grand final in a dramatic penalty shootout. It's a game that had everything. They've done a double at under 23s and first grades, and you could see what it means to them. It's a great moment for the club to be able to pick up both titles on the same day, and you can just see the jubilation on their supporters' faces as they run on to congratulate the players. The thing is, Liam, you just didn't want to have a winner, did you? It's really hard to have a loser out there today for a game that has given us pretty much everything. It's been end-to-end, -end. it's been some excellent stuff, goals at critical times, twists and turns, and now we get a penalty shootout, which is won, as you said, by a player from Griffith. And it's just heartbreak for the Ugali boys who have played so well all year, going through basically undefeated apart from that slight little slip-up in the final round. And we see it so much, don't you, that all the you see teams that do win league championships come into the grand final and for some reason or other it just doesn't work for them on the day. I mean, you have to say they've fought so hard to get themselves out of jail twice, to be honest, um, and they probably had the better of the chances over the course of the game, but football can be a cruel mistress. It really can. And Look, you saw it in the under-23s where Ain you were on top and Wanderers came away with that game as well, so it's... Been a day for the Wanderers as the underdogs to take the win. It certainly has. Thanks for your uh, company, Liam, uh, this afternoon. Really enjoyed it, mate. I hope you have a safe journey all the way back to Griffith. Hopefully, we we'll can do it again next year yeah, if one of these sides can get there. Thanks for the invite, Russ. I really enjoyed it today. It's been brilliant. It's been a great game. We'll leave you with the presentation, but just to wrap up for you, an incredible match. Matt Mensah gave Wagga City the lead in what seems a, a lifetime ago. Now, 18 minutes in, he flicked the ball into the net for his eighth of the season. Ugali levelled it with Grant Davidson's Thunderbolt five minutes from time. Wagga City thought they'd won it again. Three minutes from the end of stoppage time with Isaac Brooker's penalty. Only for Isaac Donadell to score one of the freakiest goals you'll ever see in grand final football to make it 2-2. It went to the penalty shootout. There had to be a full guy. Unfortunately, it was young Colby Sears who didn't deserve that. Jacob Brooker did though. He's won it for the Wagga City Wanderers. A dramatic grand final in the MPL 2. It finished Ugali 2, Wagga City 2 and Wagga City claimed the trophy 5-4 on penalties.
the attendance at this afternoon's match, everyone. First of all, big congratulations to you, Gully Soccer Club and Wagga City Wanderers on making the grand final of the season. Please give a round of applause for a terrific contest between these two outstanding teams. I'd we'll like to start the medal ceremony by congratulating the referees on the excellent job they have done, both today and throughout the season. The referees of today's grand final were Nathan Shakespeare, Theo Dracopoulos, Damon, Damon Van Schuten, and Alex McConaughey. Thanks, Jess. I would now like to award the player of the match, awarded to the player a judge best on ground. The player of the match for the 2020 NPL 2 Grand Final from Wagga City is Isaac Brooker. I'd now like to call the captain of the Ugali Soccer Club to say a few words. Premier League players, whatever level, uh, thank you very much for setting something up that we can just compete and play a sport. Um, and thank you to the referees also. for the champions of MPL 2. I'd like to call forward the captain of Walker City Wanderers.
congratulations to our 2020 MPL2 champions, Morgan City Wanderers. Thank you for your attendance at this afternoon's match. We hope that you all enjoyed the football on display. Stay safe and have a good night. Uh, is it alright for me to power down my camera and the live view? 